Picking up twigs, picking up twigs. I love, I love picking up twigs. One twig, two twig, three twig, four. I like twigs and I want some more. Hey lads, that's the good word. It's your boy, your boy is here. Your boy has returned. Analog horror today. Now, uh, today we're watching this one. We're watching Greylock. I have one that we can watch uh, after that. We want to keep going after that, but um, we're watching Greylock first because. Oh, actually, turn the music down. Uh, oh, uh, just a just a bit, just a tad, just a wee bit, just a wee tad. Turn the music down a wee tad. Uh, I was watching a Wendigoon stream, and he said. This is it. This is the best analog horror series on YouTube. It's Greylock, according to him. Well, you know, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> he won't be the judge of that. I'll be the judge of that. You let me be the judge of that. He's right, though? Well, we're gonna find out. Like I said, I'll be the judge. You guys let me be the judge. So we get these damn birds out of here? Fuck me. I think I've mentioned this to you guys, but when I decided that <laughs> when I decided that I wanted to get into streaming, one thing I did is I started watching more streamers because I wanted to get a feel for what they do. I was like, you know what? Let me get a feel for what these dorks are up to before I swoop in and just totally blow them all out of the water. Before I beat them all at their own game and become the best at this. Uh, and there's this one streamer that I that I watch, and I think I'm going to try to refrain from saying her name. Um, and I think a lot of what people do with streamers is, you know, as I've said before, they're just kind of like accompaniment. They just, they, they allow you to feel as if someone else is in the room with you. Um, <laughs> not unlike when you, when you turn the TV on, when you go out so your dog feels like he's not alone. That's what a streamer is, but just for people, essentially. So a lot, of the, a lot of the time what you'll do with a streamer is you'll put them on and kind of just have them on in the background as you go about your day and do other things. I was watching this one streamer that I watch on Sunday. I think it was Sunday? Might have been Saturday. Uh, and she was doing this stream. She's a VTuber. She's doing this stream where she was just like eating a bunch of gross things. Like she would take, you know, she, she would mix together like pickle brine and... and a cookie and and you know like a, a barbecue sauce and just mix all this slop together and eat it. I don't know some form of en some form of entertainment, I guess. Um, and then I came back, a VTuber eating. Yeah, I know. I couldn't believe it. I come back a little bit later. I wasn't watching the whole thing; just kind of fading in and out of it. I come back a little later, and the video is gone. And on the screen, it just says, this video has been removed. Um... Go watch the new food theory. Burnbot shows up. Okay, I'll have to look into that. Um, I come back, it says, video has been removed, and I'm like, what the hell happened here? I was in the middle of watching that, and now it says, video has been removed? I didn't get to finish. So then she streams again... ...yesterday. <laughs> apparently... The stream had to end when she accidentally cut her finger open and had to go to the emergency room. And my first thought when I found this out was, I missed it? I want to see. I want to see the footage. I want to see! And then I thought, am I evil? Am I a pure evil man for having these thoughts and feelings? Maybe. Um... But I didn't- I don't want to watch it because I want to revel or relish in her suffering, in her pain. Of course not. Don't be absurd. This is just morbid curiosity. And also, I'm thinking like, man, if she were to release- if she clipped that, she releases a clip, and the title of the clip is something like, VTuber cuts her hand open live on stream, has to go to the emergency room. That's a million views! Easy right there! You're throwing your views away! That's a million views easy. I want to see how bad it is to go to the ER. Well, that's the thing. She went to the ER and they told her that they would put a bandage on it. <laughs> they were like, well, we could put a band-aid on this. Which I guess ultimately suggests that she probably didn't need to go to the ER. Um, 
She would, you know, she perhaps just got a little frightened. Um, you know, a, a bit of an overreaction. Um, but I want to see that footage. Why? You got to release the tape. We need to start a campaign. Release the footage. Can't even watch a VTuber slice her hand open on accident. What is this, 1984? Literally 1984. If they won't release that footage, literally 1984. I need to see it. I wanted to see, I, uh, <laughs> I wanted to see like how the chat reacted. I wanted to see everything. I wanted to see how bad it was, how deep it was, how much blood there was. And maybe this all does mean that I'm pure evil for being curious about these things. But I'm sorry, it's just the way I feel. <laughs> oh, I'll never get to see. That footage will be lost permanently. Lost to time permanently. We'll never get to see it. What a bummer. Sorry he's not playing Shipwreck 64 anymore. Yeah, no more Shipwreck 64. But Wicked Wednesday will go on. We have plenty of other scary things to do. Um, I just felt like I could play Shipwreck 64 forever and not get any closer to solving it. You know, the, the the puzzles are a little too esoteric in that one. Maybe I can hey, play Max. it more? I've been watching several streams Hi. now. Oh, thank you. You keep promising to do Sonic Card as a group, but you've never even taken off your pants. Also, Wikipedia says you're bipedal, is that true? Sonic Hard as a group? I don't even know what that means. And you've never taken off your pants? I I rarely ever stream in pants. Usually I'm wearing shorts. I think during the winter I would stream in pants, but right now I'm just wearing shorts. And they're not big, they're not big shorts either. These shorts leave nothing to the imagination. <laughs> These are very revealing shorts, my friends. There we go. It's back on. It's back on, don't worry. I think a super chat got skipped. Max! What would you do if you came across a fan of yours stuffing his face with Ol' Roy dog biscuits? I would say stop. I'd say, don't. I'd say, what are you, nuts? You can't! You can't eat that. Don't eat that. Don't. No. Don't. We do have to get into it. We can't put it off any longer. Sometimes we gotta get into it, you guys. I think it, I think it only cut out briefly for a minute there. We're back. Don't worry, we're back. And everybody put a kibosh on the super chats for now. <laughs> everybody, please bow your heads and clasp your hands. You don't have to close your eyes, but if you feel it helps, go for it. Dear Relaxus, please help to relax us. Help us to sit back, unwind, unstress, decompress, breathe easy, hang loose, cool off, loosen up, and simmer down. Please bless us with mellow moods and chill vibes as we hang out, shoot the shit, and just straight kick it. Give us the strength to ignore politics, drama, and the tragedies of our modern world, and grant us the serenity to forgive those on social media who post things that make us triggered, upset, and emotionally compromised. And as always, help me to wish harmony to those who wish harm on me. Amen. Let's finish off our prayer by doing some square breathing. This is when you inhale and outhale at similar intervals. We're going to breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth, and we're going to do a count of eight. If you can't breathe through your nose, using your mouth is fine, too. Starting off, in through the nose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And out through the mouth. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once more, in through the nose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And out through the mouth. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight. <sighs> mm. 
much better. How does everybody feel? Did you feel all that stress, all of that struggle in your mind, all of that tension? The tension you have in your in your in your scalp, in your shoulders, in your neck, in your jaw, just melt away. Make sure you have good posture while you watch this show, you guys. You need good posture. If your posture sucks, everything's gonna be in pain. <laughs> I'm anxious now? Whoops. Well, I tried. I did try! <laughs> You must realize I didn't do that. I didn't do that. You can't blame the person who's trying to help you relax of stressing you out. That's not how that works. And now... To gaze upon my desktop where I'm sure nothing bad awaits me. Oh shoot. Oh shit. Oh fuck. What is this I see? AI generated Sonic Sorry to interrupt. Again. Max, Hi. what is your best goofball impression? I asked this before, but you didn't see it. Well, the thing about goofball is goofball has a very particular voice. Now, I don't know if I can replicate it because, you know, he, he, he is unreplicatable. He cannot be imitated, but I guess it might go something like... <clears throat> Hello! I am goofball! Welcome to my show! This is what I sound like! Nailed it. Don't mean to brag, but I did nail it. Anyway, let's categorize these Sonics and get it over with. We can gangbang this and get it over with, you guys. Now, obviously, we can't just take them all and put them in the recycling bin. They won't get along. They won't coexist. Sonic is very famous for not being able to coexist with people who are different from him. So... We're gonna have to categorize them. It's the only option. Goofball or Jeff Peterson? Who is the most annoying undead gay sidekick? I don't know who that is. But I'm gonna say Goofball because it's hard to imagine anybody being more annoying than Goofball. That seems unlikely. Uh, I think this might be... You know, we've been doing these Sonic categorizations for a while now. I think this might be the first one we've had of Sonic in ball form. I don't think we've ever gotten Sonic in ball form. I really love when he spins so fast that it's just like a pure blue sphere. And looks nice and smooth and reflective. I like reflective Sonic. He used to be a lot more reflective. If you look at the, uh... If you look at the artwork, the, the box art for the Genesis games, he was like reflective. He had like, uh... He was like sparkly and reflected like a bumper car. He looked like a bumper car. He had a bumper car finish. Will you do a cameo so on Smiling Friends? Salad Fingers Vows Shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can voice a buff bald man or something. I love that that shrimp episode. I love I love the Jerry Jackson voice. It's so funny. Oh, I would love to be on Smiling Friends. From your mouth to his ears, pal. From your mouth is to his ears. If they ever ask me, of course I'll say yes, but I don't know how likely it is. I would have to be stupid to not say yes. I, mean, I love, I love that smiling friend so much. I love them old boys. I love Pim. I love Charlie. I love Glep. I love Alan, even though I'm a little confused by him. I've been watching YOLO Crystal Fantasy 2 recently, and that show is also great. I don't know if you guys, if you guys have seen that. It's really, really funny. Um, I can kind of understand why Smiling Friends has had more mainstream success. Uh, because YOLO Crystal Fantasy, even though it's super, super funny, it might be, like, a little too weird for its own good. It's not so weird that I don't want to watch it, but I could see it being too weird for most people. Um. And it's also really... A lot of it is really gross. Whereas, like, Smiling Friends is weird and it's gross, but it's also very cute sometimes. Like, Pim is very, very cute. He's an incredibly cute character. Uh, Charlie is cute. Glep is cute. And it's also just, you know, Smiling Friends is closer to just being like a normal sitcom. But both shows are great. If you like Smiling Friends, you should also check out YOLO Crystal Fantasy. It's also great. Uh, we have a, we have a, a, a... Max, what if a naked man broke into your room and did a really cool flip, and then he slapped you and ran away? What would you do? 
my my first my my first impulse would be to call the cops, but I guess that would be pointless at that point, wouldn't it? The cops would show up, you know, like a half hour later. They don't get there instantly. They can't. But they would get up like a they would get there like a half hour later, and they would, I would be like, "What happened?" And I would say a, a naked man broke in and slapped me and then ran away. <laughs> and they would be like, "Okay, what do you want us to do about it?" And I'd be like, "I don't know." Arrest him? Okay, where is he? I don't know. There's not a whole lot that can be done. I would love a Sonic game that looks like this. This image is beautiful. When are we gonna get a Sonic, a Sonic game that looks like this? With the tiki's in the bathroom? In the background, excuse me? I can't talk. We got the ooh ah ooh tiki tiki. I meant to say background, accidentally said bathroom. Typical. Typical thing that Max does. Words falling out of his mouth like spaghetti falling out of his pockets. It's called pra Crash Bandicoot. This is a very Crash Bandicoot aesthetic, yeah. They should make a crossover. It's cool. In with the cools it goes. Next up... This is from the Discord. Um, <laughs> Sonic holding some kind of a bag. I guess he's being evicted from his home. There's a, what looks to be a Latin American man <laughs> with a note that says, I think it's supposed to say eviction notice, but it just says evictant notice. Now, where does Sonic live? This is like one of the greatest mysteries of Sonic. It seems like he's always living somewhere else. Tony Stark? Yeah, this is like a Hispanic Tony Stark, kind of. But he's also Sonic's uh, landlord. And Sonic has not been paying his rent, so he's got to get out. Sonic, pay up or get out. I do like the Sonic, though. It's cute. But it has to go somewhere, as all Sonics do. I'm going to say weird. Because, I, to me, it's weird that Sonic would even live in a place that he could be evicted from. I kind of just imagine him, like... Sleeping on the beach or something. Seems like a lot of Sonic games take place near the beach. So we're gonna put that in with the weird Sonics. Next? Oh my gosh. Now this is weird. Well, I mean, I guess that's the categorization right there. <laughs> now this is weird. I guess we just got our answer. <laughs> Whoops. Already categorized. Now this is weird. Yeah, it is. This is some weird stuff. Some weird and wacky stuff. Bro, I'm looking after my mom's pit bull. Yeah? Her name is Lola, and she's farting like she's being paid to do so. This dog is solely responsible for the rancid egg smell in this house. All right. Well, if any it's a pit advice? Bowl, <laughs> if it's a pit bull, my advice is don't let it around children. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for insulting your dog. I saw, I saw like a funny fake news headline. It, it, it was something like heartwarming. Pitbull swims out to sea to bite drowning child. <laughs> oh, the pitbulls! They're never gonna beat the allegations. It must suck to be a pitbull and have everyone be so prejudiced against you. But also, stop eating children, and then maybe people will lighten up. You know? Pitbulls are so sweet. I'm sure some of them can be sweet. I'm sure some of them uh, have the capacity for sweetness. I think a more accurate way to think about it would just be that they're a very difficult to manage dog breed, and a lot of people are unqualified to own them. If you're qualified to own a pit bull, you could probably own one no problem, but if you're not qualified, you shouldn't have one. Pitbulls are doing God's work. Is it God's work to bite children and eat them? Pitbulls are fine. They're just sought out by assholes for the wrong reasons. Yeah, that's probably another way you could conceptualize it. 
Um, speak of the devil, here comes my asshole. What do you want? What? Shush. Shut up. Go away. Don't come and whine at me while I'm working. Can't you see I'm working very hard right now? Yeah, I already said this was weird. <laughs> this is weird was the first thing out of my mouth, so... In with the weird Sonics it goes. Last but not least. Hi, Maxi. Enjoying. Hi. Guess what? Yeah? My birthday is on Friday. Oh, fuck yeah. Have a good stream. Well, thank you. Mwah mwah. Mwah. If you show up on Friday, I'll wish you a happy birthday. Here we have Sonic pigging out. He uh, went to McDonald's. I don't know why he has two drinks, though. Why do you need two drinks? Sonic, you should really only have one. I could understand getting two fries, because they never give you enough fries. I could eat a million of those fries. Um, but he's got uh, something with two patties. A burger with two patties. Two orders of fries. <laughs> and a little bowl of fruit. Got some, like, clementine slices in there, some strawberries, some mangoes. It's looking good. And look how excited he is. This is, like, one of the most excited images of Sonic I've ever seen. He's so happy to eat this. He's so happy to chow down on this. I think this image is cute. I think this is a cute Sonic. He looks menacing? No! Where do you get menacing from this? No, he looks like, oh yeah, I can't wait to eat all of this McDonald's! This cost me 20 damn dollars! They must be going out of their minds with that pricing! <laughs> I don't know if you guys have been to McDonald's recently, but that food is getting crazy expensive. And it's not improving in quality. Which I think is a mistake. Now, I love McDonald's because their food is tasty. But it's also, you know, basically poison. And I don't know what they're thinking, charging that much money for poison. It's getting out of hand. McDonald's, your pricing is getting out of hand. I got the Grimace birthday meal. You should it was totally look up something called the Wendy's Meat Cube sometime. Wendy's Meat Cube? If I look it up now, am I going to get in trouble? It's a secret, a secret menu item. Can I get an image? Okay, so it's just a, it's, it's just a burger with a lot of patties. All right. I mean, I would eat it, but I wouldn't feel great afterwards. I would eat it and I would have to go take a nap. Look at this dummy soy jacket. Oh! Oh! No, I don't want to watch. Look at that, it's food! I can't believe it! You know, we want to look down at the soy jackers, but every YouTuber does it. We all do it. I've done it. We all have to do it. Because apparently there's just something about this goofy face. There's something about that expression. This right here, that people on YouTube <laughs> really seem to respond to. You put the soy jack in the thumbnail, people click. Every YouTuber is a soy jack. Yeah, pretty much. All of us do it. I've done it plenty of times. Look, there's one, one of my emotes in the chat is a soy jack. So really, I can't, uh, I can't wag my finger. I can't look down my nose at this guy too much. We're all guilty. We're all truly guilty. We're all sinners in the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> in the eyes of uh, the Lord of soy jacking. Anyway, it's cute. To whoever said it's menacing, uh, you're wrong. You're just wrong. It's cute. It's a cute Sonic. And in with the cute Sonics it goes. Arby's has something worse. You know, Look not... up the Arby's Meat Mountain. Arby's Meat Mountain. Okay. Oh, oh. Chicken and cold cuts? Would that even be good? 
And this is secret menu. This isn't on the menu. You don't go in and they show it to you. They can't. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> if that's on the if that's on the actual menu. Oh my gosh, stop, stop. Windows 11 for fart's sake. If you go in and that's on the regular menu, you should leave. <laughs> you should leave and never go back. That'll kill a man. That'll kill a man. Star top bun, crown, pepper bacon, three half strips, roast beef, 1.5 ounces, not 15 ounces. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. Unlike this totally sane sandwich. Natural cheddar, one slice. Angus steak, 1.5 ounces. Brisket, 1.5 ounces. Corned beef, 1.5 ounces. Big eye Swiss, one slice. Ham, 1.5 ounces. Roast turkey, 1.5 ounces. Chicken tenders, two. And the star top bun heel. Which I guess is what you would call the bottom of a bun. Um, yeah, don't eat that. <laughs> eat that if you want to die. But some of you fuckers, I know some of you fuckers want to die. Okay, let's turn... Let's turn this to negative... We're going to do negative 7 db and see how that treats us. Give us a little more space for our notes. Greylock! Get this fucking meat mountain out of here. Greylock! Tape one. Let's see what we find today. Will this be spooky? I haven't even watched this, so I don't know why it's in the middle there. Will it be spooky? Will I determine this is the best of analog horror? Um, now, for those of you who, are, who aren't in the loop, analog horror is like a... Kind of like a series of... of, of or you know what? Maybe it wouldn't be accurate to call it a series. It's kind of like a, a stylistic choice that uh, filmmakers on, on YouTube will use. It's just like, you know, and, and there are multiple of these series running and each one kind of has like the aesthetic of being taken from like old VHS tapes or something that would appear on TV in the 90s or in the 80s. Found footage style, sort of, but like, you know, found VHS style. Um, Mandela Catalog is a bit better. I I M H O. Yeah, that guy got accused of being a pervert recently, but then it turned out to be bogus. So you know, <laughs> so congratulations for beating the allegations. We love to see it. We love when that happens. We hate our false Hi, allegations. Our sweet little maxi pad. Please don't call me that. I just wanted to say it's great to see you enjoying streaming so much, and Thank that you. it's going well for you. We're all rooting for you. Smoochies. Mwah. Moa. Thank you for your super chat. I really appreciate it means a lot to me. Yeah, congratulations to Alex Kistner for beating the allegations. That's always the best case scenario. Let's get Goofball the fuck out of here. Now, there are a lot of these, uh, just for today, he'll be back. There are a lot of these series going now. There's a lot of analog horror out there these days, but, um, and, and you know, you could argue that a lot of them feel very samey, um, but I think there's also a lot of a lot of good stuff that's come out of all of this as well. I think the Mandela catalog is pretty good. I think local eight, local fifty eight is good. Um, we watched the Walton Files. That one was you know okay, somewhere between okay and good, maybe not great. Um, just so you know, things get pretty shocking after the sixth tape. Well, we're gonna find out. Tape one. Let's get started. What do you got for me, tape one? Primary systems online. Primary systems online. Okay. Meeting sequence complete. Okay. Emergency shutdown protocols disengaged. Okay. System was offline for time code 0106. Contact technician for assistance. Welcome to Signal Dynamics Data Transfer Access Operations. Please enter your clearance credentials. One, two, three, four, five. Error. These credentials are not recognized. No, that was right. <laughs> Clearance credential requirement overridden. That was my passcode. Administrator privileges granted. That's the passcode they gave to me. One, two, three, four, five. I'm on user ID. What would you like to do? Accessing archival storage form. 
that all we got? Data extraction initiated. Data extraction, 10% complete. Data extraction, 4% Whoa. complete. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't yell at me. Data extraction, 80% complete. Data extraction, complete. All data extracted to error. No believers. Remember so Okay. Oof. Describing what I just saw is gonna be tricky because that that really wasn't a whole lot. Um We're met with some kind of automated voice talking over security camera footage. It asks us for security clearance. I said one, two, three, four, five. Somehow got rejected. I know, right? What are the odds? Um, I don't know. How would you guys describe what we just saw? I'm confused on what just happened. It seemed it seemed like they were going for style over substance there. Uh, it looked great. It sounded great. We didn't really get any information, though. And that's what we're looking for. Hmm. Just some exposition, I guess. I wouldn't even say we got exposition. What was the exposition there? And at the end, I, I recall at the end, the voice was saying data... Extraction complete. Remember that when the video is paused, the the comma and period keys to go frame by frame through the video if you see something. Uh, yeah. Not a lot of people know that. Okay, I mean, data extraction complete. I almost feel like that was a waste of a video, but maybe it was just like kind of setting the mood? Setting the mood, question mark. On to tape two. Evil, it is evil that they will find. Mark my words, there is no good that can come from the pursuit of darkness. Okay, already. Uh, dash cam footy of a car driving late at night, in the middle of nowhere. There's snow on the ground. I spell it right. Snow on the ground. Uh, driver is listening to a preacher on the radio. And you know, I agree, there is nothing to be gained from wickedness. I agree, I agree with the radio. There's nothing to be gained from wickedness. Let me read to you, dear believer, the words of the late, brilliant Charles Spurgeon, who discussed this at length. Yeah, let's hear it. German all the way back in 1864. He said, quote, Our adversary, the devil, goes about Ooh, I hate like that a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We are taught by our Lord Jesus to pray. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. What we are taught to seek or shun in prayer we should equally pursue or avoid in action. Very warily, therefore, should we endeavor to avoid temptation, seeking to walk in the path of obedience so that we may... <laughs> I, thought he, I thought he was going to say, seeking to walk in the path of obesity. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, radio host hates the devil. I hate him too. Fuck that guy. <laughs> oh, I hate that guy. He's always acting a fool. That rascally devil, that rascally old scratch, old scratch clawed out from the depths of Hades. Never be guilty of tempting the devil to tempt us. Tempting the devil to tempt us. We are us. not to enter the thicket in search of the lion. We may pay dear... 
Okay, the car is pulling up somewhere. Guilty of tempting the devil to tempt us. Interesting concept. Okay, this video is this this video is a little meatier than the last one. This one is uh, almost five minutes. I will not tempt the devil to tempt me. You ain't gonna get me, devil. You ain't gonna get me. Not today. Not today, Beelzebub. Oh, blood in the snow. Okay. Driver gets out and wanders through the woods, finding blood in the snow. It's my favorite. <laughs> blood in the snow, my favorite emo band. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, some trees, some sticks. I can barely understand that. Pal, back up from the mic. Pal, get the mic out of your ass. <laughs> Guys, I have to ask. Can you, can you understand what that voice is saying? Because I feel like it's so close to almost being understandable, but I really got nothing. Like, if you were to ask me, what did, what did you just hear? I'm like, I got nothing. Truly nothing. No? Nope? Okay, it's not just me then. Like, that is impossible to understand. Not just me, good. Whoa, 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 whoa! I think I just heard the word Greylock. That was Greylock. That was the word Greylock. Greylock. Well, at least they worked in the title. Something white sticking out. Some some kind of a weird white box sticking out of that tree. Weird white square. There there is. There is a weird white square shape sticking out of a tree, and I wonder what that could be. Could it be an axe? No, it doesn't look like an axe. This is great audio. Great audio whether design. It sounds very very creepy, very spooky. The devil himself, whether we intended to or not, dear believer, we are drawn to him by our own hearts. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. Matthew, says, oh I love the gospels. The heart come evil, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, murder, Ringo. Adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. There is a shadow nested deep, deep within our hearts, within our minds, in a place most people don't even know exists within themselves. The devil is going to call to those depths, dear Not believer. Me. And though you may tremble before the beast, you should make it easier on yourself and accept what it is that he bestows upon you. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Drive faster, the devil is gaining on us. 
He's coming! The devil has a plan for me. I don't like the sound of that. I don't like the idea. I, whatever whatever plan the devil has, I'm not interested. I'll take the plan of Relaxus, thank you very much. Um, right, You know what? I'll include that. As the video ends, the preacher on the radio says, The devil has a plan for you. Zachy, thanks for gifting that sub. Very generous of you. Herm. Is this a very religious series? Is this about, like, the horror? The, the horror of the devil? Is the devil the antagonist of this? Is this, like, religious horror? I guess it could be anything at this point. I really have no idea. Uh, I, I have truly no idea what I'm getting in for with this. Alright, tape three. Tape 3, Orientation Protocols, Greylock, Analog Horror. Warning, this video cassette is intended for the sole use of name, Alexander Michael Marsh. Subject ID, AM091065. Whoa, 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 whoa. Unauthor this could be nothing, but I want to read it anyway. Unauthorized viewing of this videotape is strictly prohibited. If you are in possession of this tape and are not the intended viewer, you are required to stop this tape. <gasps> Should we? Should we stop? Or should we keep going? Guys, should we stop? And bring it to a superior officer or your local FBI field office immediately. Anyone who is believed to have violated this directive will be subject to interrogation, imprisonment, a fine of up to $500,000. I don't got that kind of scratch. I don't have anywhere near that much money. And potential military discharge if applicable. For enhanced confidentiality, this video cassette has been modified so that it will not operate as intended on consumer grade video cassette recorders, VCRs, and must be played on a specialized military sanctioned hardware. See page 7 in your handbook for more information. So this, uh, hmm. Turn on the subtitle? Yeah, maybe. Bethanuts Turdwell also gifting subs today. Very generous. I love it. You guys are being so nice. So this is a VHS tape intended for authorized government person personnel. And I don't know how to spell personnel, but I'm going to assume that's correct. I'm going to assume that's good enough. Greetings, and welcome to the preconditional protocols and orientation video system provided by Unit 13. As part of the United States Army and Project Stargate, created in partnership with... Okay. By authorized army personnel. It's about something called Operation... Stargate. It's a, it's a sci-fi. That was an old sci-fi show, right? In like the 80s or 90s? Symbiodyne USA. On behalf of all of us here at Unit 13. What did, what, what did they say before that? The United States Army Hang on. Project Stargate. Created in partnership with Symbiodyne USA. On the Created... I don't know how relevant any of this is, but I'm going to write it down anyway. Created in partnership with Simeodyne USA. Simeodyne sounds like the word simian. <laughs> that makes me think it's a company that's run by a bunch of monkeys and chimps and apes. I know it's not, but that's what it's making me think of. We have of all of us here at Unit 13. Congratulations on your selection as one of our testing candidates. Well, thank you. You luckily have a lot of questions. Yeah. And this video is designed to answer them all. 
First, let's go over some background information to provide you with the crucial context you need for a full understanding of what it is we're doing at Unit 13. We are sure you've heard plenty of rumors surrounding what it is that we do, but we are willing to bet that most everything you've heard is wrong. Mm. Being a highly confidential part of Project Stargate, which you've already been briefed on, Unit 13 studies a revolutionary and promising area of parapsychology. Thought forms. If you're unfamiliar with what thought forms are, that's okay. You're in the majority. So, what are thought forms? Through the ages, occultists and spiritualists, uh -oh. Tibetan monks to theosophists, have exercised the creation of what is sometimes referred to as a tulpa, otherwise known oh, no. as a thought form. A thought form is the manifestation of a person's will, emotion, or other deeply psychologically energized state into a semi-physical form, existing as not only an extension of the person, but as its own independent and sentient entity. Thought forms are also able to be witnessed and experienced by third parties, and are not limited solely to the person who developed them. Thought forms have been formed... Okay, well then that would be different from a tulpa. Because a tulpa is just... it's... it's... it's purely just for you. It's strictly just in your imagination. Project Stargate might be about creating thought forms, which are like tulpas, but exist objectively for all to see? Question mark? To serve as familiars, companions, or even friends to those who conjure them. According to key literature, thought forms can be intentionally formed by a single person or multiple people, though they can be unintentionally formed as well. But they are always manifested through the deep will and focus of a person in a considerably heightened state of connectivity with their own consciousness. Traditional thought forms can vary widely in their level of influence in the real world. While they usually take physical formations eventually, their earliest stages are more apparitional in nature, with brief manifestations, though most often remaining as an unseen essence, much like a phantom or a ghost. At this phase, thought forms and ghosts are very similar in a number of ways. Individuals who make contact with them through communication devices, such as a Ouija board or through EVP sessions, while the thought form may respond through moving objects, manipulating electronics, or even speaking words in short phrases. Due to their striking similarities, a current theory established by Unit 13 suggests that what we know as ghosts may not be as common as we once believed. Rather than a deceased person's energy being left behind after death, it's possible, and indeed likely, that these paranormal entities are actually thought forms that are unintentionally created by those individuals that the deceased has left behind, who spend inordinate amounts of time in deeply emotional states, where their mental capacity is largely occupied by a powerful focus on the departed individual. Okay, so... What we commonly considered to be ghosts are actually thought forms created by the grieving loved ones of the deceased. Guys, if I died, would you create thought forms of me? <laughs> Guys, when I die, you gotta bring me back as a thought form. You just have to sit down and think about me as hard as you can, and then I'll, I'll just pop right into existence. You gotta bring me back. That's how I can live forever. You better bring me back. You have to. I won't tolerate you guys not making a thought form of me. <laughs> if you don't make a thought form of me, I really will come back as a, as a ghost and haunt you. A thought form? T-H-O-T form. <laughs> yeah, that's when you're a ghost, but you're a little slutty. You're a thought form. In other words... Is Goofball a thought form? You know, I was never interested in the idea of 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 eventually revealing in brain dump that goofball was just in my imagination and that he never existed because I was I was just like that's way too stupid. I would never do that. But I did briefly entertain the idea of making an episode where I believe that goofball is fake. And then throughout the episode I'm like, okay, all I have to do is stop paying attention to goofball and start ignoring him and eventually the part of my brain that believes in him will die and then he'll disappear but then over the course of the episode it just becomes increasingly obvious that goofball is more and more real and i can't make him disappear 
Could have been funny. Could have been funny. As these are the ideal conditions from which thought forms are born, people may very well create their own ghosts and hauntings. However, as more time and energy is invested into the development of the thought form, they begin to harness more influence on their environment, until eventually exhibiting a semi-permanent physical appearance. Until eventually getting a boner. Becoming as tangible as a living creature. This is where Unit 13's interest comes in. We've signed Okay, so... The more people focus on a thought form, the more tangible they they become over time. Interesting. Unit 13. Unit 13 is... To answer a very important question. Can thought forms be created in a manner that would benefit American society? And help Can a thought form run for president? Help keep American citizens safe. <laughs> Unfortunately, the practice of intentionally creating a thought form by traditional methods would undoubtedly take years and years of devout mental training. So, Project Stargate has enlisted a world-renowned authority in thought forms, a man named Dr. Bernard Hayes, to oversee a number of the operations related. Unit 13 recruits Dr. Bernard Hayes to perfect the creation of thought forms to better assist the American people? For America, huh? Or so they say. I don't know if America needs ghosts. What are they going to do? Fight in our wars for us? To Unit 13's work. His participation has been invaluable and has brought fruitful results to the project. Due to Unit 13 and Simeodyne USA's combined efforts, bringing together some of the most prestigious minds in the world, specializing in the sciences of the human consciousness, with cutting-edge technology and engineering methods, we've created a groundbreaking, proprietary invention. It's, it's called a computer. The Thought Form Manifester. The Thought, the form, thought manifester. form Manifester. Okay. Unit 13 and... Simeodyne eventually invent the thought form manifester. You guys better watch your thought forms. You gotta be you gotta be careful when thoughts are forming, or they might form into a thought form. Methods. We created a groundbreaking proprietary invention. Introducing the thought form manifester. The Thought Form Manifester is able to create truly independent and self-sustaining Thought Form entities from the minds of select, willing participants. Being that they come from the deepest recesses of the human mind, Thought Forms can appear in virtually any configuration. They Does this mean Goofball could be real? Is Goof- could Goofball for real? Goofballreal.irl? In the IRL? Goofballreal.exe? In IRL? Could it be? We can build him. We have the technology. We could sap him out of fiction and into our real world. We could do it. We could do it for realsies. They could look like a person, an object, an animal. A cartoon ghost. As abstract as the physical representation of an emotion. That being said, it's recommended to brace yourself before touring the thought form chambers, as thought forms can also take on appearances that could be considered disturbing, like a creature. <laughs> like a cartoon ghost. <laughs> There's no reason. <laughs> so wait, what did he say? I was talking <laughs> over it. A childhood nightmare. Something <laughs> childhood nightmare. Disturbing, like a creature one might see in a childhood nightmare. Okay. There's no reason to be afraid, however. All thought forms are docile by nature, and while they may look or behave in a frightening manner. Docile by nature, why would that inherently be true? Why wouldn't it just be entirely informed by your thought? Because they are thought formed. If I thought form something that's not docile, wouldn't it just not be docile? And though they are capable of making physical contact, they pose no threat to humans. 
Once your session in the Thought Form Manifestor is completed, your Thought Form will be securely transported directly into a containment chamber. Thought Forms are unable to pass through the barrier of the Manifestor and will not be capable of causing you any issues. There are some very rare potential side effects that may result from your session. These side effects include increased tiredness, loss of balance, dizziness, insomnia, vomiting, All my favorites. episodes of temporary amnesia, and mild hallucinations. These side effects, if present, will clear up within 72 hours of your session. Okay, so... Thought forms are somehow... Unexp... Unexplainably... Uh, didn't spell that right. I don't think the S needs to be in there. Somehow, unexplainably, always docile. The machine can cause physical side effects. Once again, might just be flavor text. Don't know if that's going to relate to anything. And are simply signs of your brain recalibrating to the real world. It is recommended that you refrain from driving or operating heavy machinery for 72 hours after your session, even if you experience no side effects. None of these side effects should cause you any harm or overt stress, and former testing candidates who have experienced these side effects reported that they were very mild and merely a transient inconvenience. With all of that out of the way, we are looking forward to your participation with Unit 13 and your time in the Thought Forum Manifestor. A patient with Unit 13. The tape is intended for people who will be used or will use the Thought Form mani Manifestor Machine. Okay. ...has been scheduled. However, there are several required mind exercises as a part of this video system that must be completed prior to your scheduled date in order to prime your consciousness and ensure the highest quality results. Please enter the video cassette labeled TF2. Wait for your <laughs> I love TF2! Now. This is the end of this tape. Do we get to play TF2? Uh, alright. What did I write? Ooh, I wrote a lot. VHS tape intended for authorized army personnel. It's about something called Operation Stargate, created in partnership with Simeodyne USA. In in partnership between Unit 13 and Simeodyne USA, Project Stargate was about creating thought forms, which are like tulpas but exist objectively for all to see. What we commonly consider to be ghosts are actually thought forms created by the grieving loved ones of the deceased. The more people focus on a thought form, the more tangible they become. Over time, Unit 13 recruits Dr. Bernard Hayes to perform, to perfect the creation of thought forms to better assist the American people. So, fighting in our wars, taking out our garbage, scrubbing our back in the shower, wiping our big fat asses <laughs> after we get the McDonald's shits. Um... You know, American stuff. Unit 13 and Simeodyne eventually invent the Thought Form Manifestor. Thought forms are, somehow, unexplainably, always docile, even though I don't think that makes sense. The machine can cause physical side effects. The tape is intended for people who will use the Thought Form Manifestor machine. Okay. Now, we got a lot of information from that one. There's some good information there. But what if somebody manifests... A thought form of the devil or of the Satan would that not be bad should we allow people to have this kind of power I say absolutely not or else we're gonna have some big spooky devils some big Jersey devils running around tape four what is this one? eight minutes ten seconds I see someone out there. They're standing very still.
Okay. Some creepy... <laughs> some creepy weirdo with a camcorder is looking into people's windows like a damn creep. You got a creepy creeper over here, creeping around, being a creep. Walking around in the woods, looking in people's windows. Trying to see ladies in the shower. Yeah, that's the molding on the side of the house. Very good. Yeah, that's a bush. Yeah, very good. Oh boy, this guy just had to capture all of this. Ooh boy, ooh boy. Couldn't miss a second of this. Yeah, that's probably the driveway. Yeah, molding on the side of the house again. Somebody needs to take this guy's camera away. <laughs> Buddy, you ain't you ain't no Quentin Tarantino. This is not a certified hood classic. Stop! Stop! There's nobody in there and you're being weird! Stop! I'm about to get jump scared, I know it. That's what this is building towards. Don't look in people's windows, pal. <laughs> it's just gonna be eight minutes of somebody looking in people's windows. <laughs> uh. Hey man, the Blair Witch looked like this and it was good. Yeah, but the Blair Witch wasn't boring. It was a good movie. It was entertaining from start to finish. That's the difference. Okay, he took the screen off the window. Is that the, the screen from the window? Caps lock is on. He takes the screen off of a window. Sticks his dick inside. Hey, pal, get your wiener out of there. Hey, pal, get your wiener out of there. What are you doing? Oh, is he crawling in? Is he crawling? Don't, don't go in that window. Don't crawl in there. Oh, where is he now? That doesn't look like the inside. Oh no. Stay out of there. That ain't your home. That ain't your home. You stay out of there. Opens window and crawls inside. Like a creep. Like a creepy creeper. Here's around. Ooh. Carpeted staircase. Looks up a staircase. He's a door. <sighs> this is spooky. This is spooky. Oh, what? <laughs> okay. Uh He looks up a staircase. That sounds like it was coming right from inside my ears. That was so creepy. That that was some great audio mixing there. Looks up the stairs. I thought that was like behind me or something. So my headphones was making it sound like it was coming from behind me. Looks up the stairs. Suddenly a scuffle is heard. Do we want to say that screen goes black? Screen goes black, and suddenly a scuffle is heard. Do we want to say that sounded like a scuffle? Would it be appropriate to use the word scuffle to apply to that? Is scuffle an appropriate lang uh, label to apply to what we just heard? A scuffling? Murder? I don't know about murder. It could have been anything. Maybe she got away. Scuffle is heard. A woman is distressed. We heard a woman's voice, definitely. 
It sounded like an attack, but what is an attack if not a targeted scuffle? <laughs> that could have been a scuffle. Could have been a kerfuffle. Scuffle, a short, disorganized fight or struggle. Violent scuffles broke out between a rival group of demonstrating... Between rival groups demonstrating for and against independence. Now, define kerfuffle. <laughs> a commotion or fuss. It was definitely a kerfuffle. Possible scuffle. Possible scuffle. Definite kerfuffle. A commotion or fuss, especially one caused by conflicting views. I would say they had conflicting views. Basically, one of their views was you shouldn't break into people's homes, and the other one had the view that it's okay to break into people's homes and attack them. It's just your classic scuffle kerfuffle situation. The moon! The moon is a horrible moon! No! Oh. I'm turning into a werewolf from that moon! It's. it's. it's turning me! I can feel the transformation from the moon! I'd like to thank. Hey, it's Max Headroom! My right writers, my director, director, my friends. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Just a million times why? <laughs> now, I wasn't named after Max Headroom, but my parents have told me Max Headroom is where they got the idea to name me Max. And I'm not sure how I should feel about that. Because even though that doesn't mean I was named after him, it kind of means I was named after him. Sort of. So if, if Max Headroom had never existed, my name would not be Max right now, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, Creeper continues to creep, then looks up at the moon. Max Headroom jump scare. Ordinary PP people who made me what I am today. Max Headroom premieres after moonlighting tomorrow. <laughs> EBS emergency broadcast system. We interrupt our current program at the request of the Massachusetts State Police. This I was born and raised in Massachusetts. This is all about me. This whole thing is about me. It's all coming together. Born and raised in Massachusetts. Named after Max Headroom. It's all about me. I'm the key to all this. Uh, <laughs> emergency alert. And what is the emergency alert going to tell us? What is the emergency alert going to tell us, I wonder? This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. All normal broadcasting has been discontinued during the emergency. This station will broadcast official information, news, and instruction for Northern Berkshire County, Massachusetts, after the following tone. At 3.34 a.m., Massachusetts State Police confirmed the presence of a potential group of active and unidentified home invaders who have targeted 49 residences since approximately 11.15... A group of home invaders? That's that's horrifying. Imagine there's like a roving band of home invaders that have broken into dozens and dozens of homes. Homes are currently being invaded. Currently... Oh, that's so creepy. Currently... Actually, we don't need to. We don't need currently twice in the same sentence. What are we nuts? Currently numbering forty-nine. That would be like the scariest thing to hear on the emergency broadcast system. Like homes are being invaded. Look the fuck out. Lock your doors. Ooh. Ooh da, 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 da. No, thank you. Additionally, residents are urged to arm themselves with a blunt object or firearm if available 
That's what we call castle doctrine. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they have that in Massachusetts. I guess, you know, in an emergency situation, they would. Uh, residents are advised to... <laughs> residents are advised you come within three feet of me and I'll kill you. <laughs> Take your swing, take your swing. <laughs> That's what it says in the Constitution. You come within three feet of me and I kill you. I'm standing my ground, boy. I'm standing my ground. Ugh. I don't want to get attacked. If you're currently away from home, we are urging you not to return home at this time. Shelter in place where you are. If you are currently not in a secure area or in a vehicle, immediately head to your closest seven mark. Each seven mark. Seven Mart? I've never heard of a place called Seven Mart. Uh, Seven Marts are safe zones. Cinemark? Did they say Cinemark? Like the movie theaters? They could have said Cinemark. That is a real place. There's a Cinemark near where I live. I go there sometimes. That's where I saw Late Night with the Devil last week. Or two weeks ago, or however long ago it was. Did they say Cinemark? We're going to say Seven Mart. It doesn't matter. Open your home to anyone you do not intimately recognize. Do not attempt to search for or engage with any suspects. The suspects are considered armed and extremely dangerous. Do not leave your secure area unless necessary. This is for your safety. Ooh, whoa, 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 what? What now? Oh my god, that sound mixing is so good. It sounds like there's someone screaming outside my apartment right now. <gasps> Holy fuck, that's scary. Jeez, that's this is giving me chills. That audio is so good. Oh, oh god, no! Oh, oh no, no, no! Okay. That's very good, thank you. God. People people are screaming. Oh my god, my whole body just broke out in chills. People are screaming. It is Really, really spooky. <laughs> God, that audio, that was so good. God, that really got me. Hand grabs, someone is filming outside their window. Outside their window. A hand grabs the window and scares the piss out of me. Jeez, that was great. Wendigoon wasn't fucking around. This is the best analog horror series. God, imagine if there was an outbreak of home invasions and people are just randomly attacking each other. I'm enthralled. That audio was so good. I can't believe how good that audio... That audio, like pulled me in, and then it made the jump scare more effective. God, that was amazing. That was so good. Jeez. Okay, tape. Tape five. Not here, not now, not anywhere. Greylock. Well, hello again, Tiffany. Hello again, oh, Tiffany. Hi, Wanda. Nice to see you. Wanda? Nice to see you. Well, hello again, Tiffany. Oh, hi, Wanda. Nice to see you. Wanda. Nice to see you, too. No dad this time. No, unfortunately. He couldn't get off work today. So I'm going to have to call him on a payphone to let him know all the details as soon as we're done. <laughs> <laughs> He's excited to be a dad, huh? Oh, yes. He uh, certainly is. 
We, we both can't wait to be parents. Aw, and you said you've been together since high school, right? Yep. That is so sweet. And have you decided on a name for your baby boy yet? Yep, we're going with Mac. Ooh. My name? My fucking name? This is all about me. I'm the key to all this. So is this a woman meeting with a pregnant woman meeting with her doctor? We hear a dialogue between, I, I'm going to assume it's her doctor, a pregnant woman meeting with her doctor. The woman is naming her baby Max, and then in parentheses, that's my name. Max Gilardi cameo? Yes, this is all about me. Everything is all about me. You should have known that. Everything is inevitably all about me. <laughs> you're not the real Max. You're a thought form. Well, I guess that wouldn't be too bad. I would want to know where the real Max is then. Max, huh? That's a nice strong name. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And I'm a, I'm a nice strong man. Make him strong right off the bat. That's a pretty. My fiance wanted it so bad. He says it'll help make him strong right off the bat. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good way of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. so let's see how strong little Max is, so you can hurry up and make that call. Mm -hmm. Please. He's been moving around like crazy the past couple weeks, so I think he's really strong. Strong enough to kick so hard, I almost. I have been moving around like crazy the last couple of weeks. <laughs> That's that part. That is not true. I have not been moving around like crazy the last couple of weeks. I've been lying on the couch sick for the last couple of weeks. Grow up sometimes too. Oh, <laughs> what a wild boy! I am a wild boy. Good. Yep. That is true. That's correct. Okay. Hopefully this isn't too cold. No, it's okay. There he is. He's definitely a growing boy, that's for sure. A doctor's and a bad actor. Both looking really good. Oh, I love hearing that. Let's get some measurements to see exactly exactly how much he's grown. Exactly, exactly. <gasps> oh, we got something there. What was that? What was that, I wonder? Going back. I want to see whatever that- wait, am I going forward? I am, whoops. Oops, wrong button. Oops, oops, wrong button. Frame by frame. Okay, let's find it. Whoa! Bizarre events leave Berkshires in terror. Authorities mute. I would love to read this, but I don't know if I can. I don't know if it's legible enough. Tension creates a threat to the ness of his wife as well from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Friday to 5 p.m. Saturday. I can't read all of this text right here. I don't think I can read it. It's not clear enough. It's too blurry. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I think I might have seen one more thing. Oh, no, 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 get away from me, jeez. God damn. Get fucking... Who is that? Is that Jason Voorhees? Is that what he looks like? Who is this? Gah. Yikes. Yikes are Rooney. What was that? I don't know. I've never seen that before. Mike Myers, thank you. I don't I know my fucking horror power. icons. Oh. Okay. Um, this is a bit strange. What? Jason what? Voorhees, he's the one who wears the hockey mask, I think, yeah? That might be correct. Nothing to worry about or anything. Just having some trouble finding the baby all of a sudden. Oh, jeez. Maybe the machine messed up? Possibly. But I can still see everything else. It's just not picking up the baby for some reason. H has this ever happened before? Um, well, sometimes babies can move into certain positions that are hard to see. But, but, but you can't see my baby at all? 
I'm looking. He's taking a piss break. He, he's definitely here. Why is he definitely here if you can't see him? Are we going to get baby jump scared? You know what? <laughs> Why don't we just see if we can borrow another machine, okay? There has to be something wrong with this one. I'll be right back. He just um, warped out of there. Tiffany Chris Tiffany Chris Chrisaldi, twenty nine, school teacher. <laughs> Government came and took my baby. Ha! Ah, ooh, don't, don't, don't. Okay, um... We hear a dialogue between a pregnant woman meeting with her doctor. The woman is naming her baby Max. Suddenly the baby disappears during an ultrasound. Is there anything else I want to take from that? Lady is distraught... ...by the amazing disappearing baby. <laughs> Oh, this is one of them dang disappearing babies. Disappear have one S or two? I don't know. Who cares? The newspaper? I didn't... It didn't really give me... I, I don't really think I could read a lot of that newspaper. See, like, here it's too blurry. And it does get it does get clearer as we get closer, but then like more of it is cut off. And then that other newspaper in the middle of the video, we we just couldn't read that one at all, like at all, not even a little. Ah, that sound! Whoa, 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 whoa! Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Dr. Bernard T. Hayes. Now that's the now that that is a name we've heard before. We've already heard that name. Symposium on Jungian Jung, Jungian? Jungian. I'm not sure how you say that. Psychology and the Manifestation of Consciousness. New York City, October 4th, 1981. So this is a recording of a lecture by Dr. Bernard I gotta hear that one more time. I wanna hear I, I I wanna hear everything he said one more time. From the beginning. As an equal. The audio mixing in this is so good. It's so effective. It's so damn good. I can't believe how good it is. Humanity has stood tireless past to a great many trials of intellectual Cookie crisp. Infinite knowledge and power, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, creepy, 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 okay. Okay, creepy, creepy, creepy. Um, man has toiled throughout history to, for the purpose of seeking out slash finding, or no, the purpose of of themselves becoming like God. Man has toiled throughout history for the purpose of themselves becoming like God, or becoming godlike. Say that instead. Becoming godlike. Hey, Simeodyne. Welcome back, user. Frank Porter. Please enter your credentials. Credential requirement bypassed by system administrator. Greetings, but no user ID. Welcome to Simeodyne USA's virtual message assistant for user. Project director, Frank Porter. I, met I mentioned Cookie Crisp once and I look at the chat and you guys are all discussing Cookie Crisp now. I haven't had Cookie Crisp since I was like a small child. I don't know how good it could possibly be, though. Most cereals are not great. Establishing custom telephone message settings. Go! Key Crisp! The Morelli Construction and Mining Company. Dates of receipt ranging from March 24th, 1987 to March 30th, 1987. Beginning playback of your messages. Message 1. March 24th, 11.14 a.m. Hey Frank, it's Paul Morello. We ran into somewhat of an issue today. We came across these tunnels. That looks like Paul Rudd. Does that look like Paul Rudd to any of you guys? Look at that handsome man. Oh, he's definitely handsome because he looks like Paul Rudd, who is also handsome. That's the same damn guy. <laughs> There we go. He's a, he's about to generate a nude tain. Inside the mountain, pretty deep in, but uh, well, this is gonna sound a little crazy, but he told me to call if anything strange came up, and uh, I figured this qualifies. People have been here before. Okay. Recording of a Paul Rudd construction worker. Contact, contacting his superiors at Simeodyne. They were digging into a mountain, I think he said, and found... Some obviously man-made shit in there, like carvings and stone. This shit looks ancient, like real old. I took a crew in to look through it, but... Seems part of the tunnels caved in some time ago. We're gonna just have to bust through it regardless. But I still wanted to make you aware of it. Anyways, I'll keep you in the loop. Thanks. Thank Message you, Paul Rudd. March 25th, 7.38 a.m. Mount Greylock? Interesting. Hey. I didn't get that from what I was listening to, but somebody just said Mount Greylock in the chat. I'm gonna assume that that's correct. Into a mountain called... Mount Greylock. I hope you guys aren't trolling. Frank, it's Paul. Just to tell you the day Did he just say it's Paul? His name is literally Paul? He is Paul Rudd. He just said his name is Paul. Hang on. Hey, Frank, it's Paul. It's Paul Rudd! I'm to tell you the day might be a bit slower than usual. Unfortunately, a number of the crew are sick as dogs. I just spit on my computer screen. I'm uh, not really sure what kind of stomach bugs going around or what, but we'll do our best to pick up slack. I'm calling in some guys who have a day off, so uh, hopefully things will get a little closer to normal, you know? That being said, I don't know how the hell this happened, but the section of the tunnel where I caved in is clear. The tunnel's been wired up with a few lights, too. Wanted to see if maybe you sent someone in while we were all shift. Night crew said you didn't, but, you know, I didn't see anybody else either, so... But a few of the guys said they'd seen something running around in the woods surrounding the site. I think it's probably a deer or whatever, but... 
Also, a few of his co-workers, we want to say, say they've seen something running around in the woods. Could be good. Seeing all the ruckus we're making out here, you know? But they all insisted it was something else. Something like a, a real tall man. A real tall man. Might just be some environmentalist moron trying to cause some shit, but... You know, he ain't done nothing, so I told him to keep focused on the project. For sake to say, we're gonna avoid the tunnel until I hear back from you. Alright, bye now. Message 3. March 25th, 4.56 p.m. Hey, Frank, it's Paul again. The guy you sent out to take photos just left, but, uh... Well, he seemed totally fine when he got here, but... We practically had to carry him back to his car when he was done. I don't know if he caught whatever's going around, but... Figured you should know. Also, we found some really old shit down there, Frank. Now, I ain't no historian, but... We got a guy on the crew who used to do archaeology work or whatever, and... I don't know. Well, I guess there's some old artifacts down there, like weapons and trinkets and whatever. I'll have him draft up a report for you and send it your way, because I feel like he'd be interested, and he can explain all this shit better than I could anyways. His name's Arnold Rivers. That's about it. All right. Bye. Okay. Arnold Rivers, another construction worker, has a background in archaeology, says the finding is important somehow. Message 4, March 26th, 1.03 p.m. Something ain't right here. Something ain't right here. Everyone's getting worse. More sick. Everyone's getting sick. I, I feel okay so far, but I, I don't know how long that's gonna last. I saw that thing the guys have been talking about last night. Just is walking this, around in the tree line. Is his face changing? Yes. Yes, he's losing his smile. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. It's <laughs> he's smiling, and then... Oh, now he's not so happy. Now he's not so happy anymore. I'll have him draft up a report for you and send it your way, because I feel like he'd be interested, and he can explain all this shit better than I could anyways. His name's Arnold Rivers. That's about it. All right. Bye. Message 4. March 26th, 1.03 p.m. Frank, something ain't right here. Crew's getting worse, more sick. I, I feel okay so far, but I, I don't know how long that's gonna last. Hmm. I saw that thing the guys have been talking about last night, stalking around in the tree line. I swear it had a face. Everything has a face, genius. Uh, anyways, it would be weirder if it didn't have a face. Message 5. March 27th, 1210 p.m. All our food is rotten, totally spoiled, and c covered in maggots. Food is going spoiled. Fine, stored. There wasn't any problems with the generator, even if we lost power. I mean, it's the end of March. All our food looks like it's been left out in the heat for weeks. No idea what's going on. Please call me back. Message six, March twenty seventh, four oh two p.m. It's Paul. We saw it again. It's funny how even though they're using the liquify tool on his face to make it look like he's slowly frowning, it still kind of looks like he's smiling. It just looks like a less enthusiastic smile. 3-27-1987. This was a year before I was born. Something out here with us. It's in the woods. And it's... It's watching us, goddammit. It ain't no animal either. I mean, you guys gonna put up those oh, fancy hunting cameras and see if we can catch anything. Yeah, catch that Bigfoot. Was fucking with us? I don't know. We're we gonna catch that dang Sam yeah. Squanch. Anyways, I, I just... Motion undetected. Or motion detected. Is it a Bigfoot? Message 7. Date and time unavailable. Message... <laughs>
I don't see nothing. Oh, oh, ooh, oh. Some vapors? We got vapors? They got vapors out in these woods? Message we got vapors? March 29th, 10.13 p.m. Um, they set up a camera to catch the spooky <laughs> woods walker. All it seems to capture is strange vapors. Strange, mysterious vapors. I would say those are vapors. Would you guys say those were vapors? I think that's what we were looking at there. It's Paul. Holy oh, shit. Uh, Paul Rudd. Well, a lot of the crew here is sick now, and they're sort of like and unresponsive. We tried emergency contacts for them, but they didn't know they just keep ringing. The phones, they just, they just kept ringing and ringing and ringing. Nobody picked up from any number we tried. Nobody picked up. No answer machines either. We had to call the hospital, and he was the same thing. Just ringing. Just tried 911, still nothing. I figured the phones were fucked up, but... The machine actually picked up. Is he laughing? Alright, he's laughing. He's laughing. He's having fun. Paul is losing it. Uh, some of the workers have become unresponsive. I think I caught whatever's going around. My skin, it feels, feels tight. A lot of pressure behind my eyes. My, my teeth feel like they're, they're humming, vibrating. Mm. You know what? What? I just all started when we came across that tunnel. I feel like it, I need to figure out what's down there. I think whatever's down there could help my crew. But most of all, I feel like something really bad's gonna happen if I don't go down. So I'll be going down tonight. Have fun. <laughs> he's turning into the Joker. Oh, he's joking around all right. <laughs> that hole was made for him? Yeah, exactly. It's like an Amariga fault situation. Whoa, 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 whoa. Message 9. March 30th. Time unavailable. All the workers being zombified. Yeah. Looks like Paul lost his nose. Enough, stop. Back up. Paul, can you back up? This is the end of your messages. The workers are becoming becoming zombified in hang on hang on hang on the workers are becoming zombified in some way perhaps perhaps inciting some kind of riot i feel like that's a safe assumption they suffering oh they suffering all right they do be suffering. They do be suffering, though. It doesn't sound like it's a fun time. Motion detected one more time. Authorities continue to investigate right. the recent crime wave that swept... We got a lot of information from that. Is that... Is that the most information we've gotten so far? From tape six? Um... Maybe tape three was more. Hmm. <clears throat> I want to 
Let's just go over that one more time. According of a lecture by Dr. Bernard Hayes, man has toiled throughout history for the purpose for for the purpose themse- for the purpose of for the purpose of themselves becoming godlike. Recording of Paul Rudd, construction worker, contacting his superiors at Sim- Simeodyne. We're digging at a, they were digging into a mountain called Greylock Mountain, or Mount Greylock, and found ancient man-made carvings and stones. Also, a few, of, a few of his co-workers say they've seen something running around in the woods. Could be a real tall man. Nothing scarier than a real tall man. Arnold Rivers, another construction worker, has a background in archaeology, says the finding is somewhat is important somehow. Or somewhat important. A lot of workers are getting sick. Food is going spoiled. They set up a camera to catch the spooky woods walker. All it seems to capture is strange, mysterious vapors. Paul is losing it! Some of the workers have become unresponsive. The workers are becoming zombified in some way, perhaps inciting some kind of riot. (laughs) Tall men freak me out? Oh, gee, thanks. Why? Because you're jealous? You're jealous of our of our ability to get things off of high shelves? I'm gonna assume that's why. ...across northern Berkshire County, left many of its residents in a state of anxiety and panic. It was two weeks ago when the emergency broadcast system was engaged to warn residents to secure their homes due to the activity of a group of individuals who had been targeting and breaking into people's homes. This looks like this looks like real news footage. This is really impressive for how well done this is. News reports on the on the home invasions. So how could we piece together everything that we've gotten so far? If people were becoming, if, if, the, if the construction workers in the mountain were becoming zombified somehow, that could then, and then it, you know, it was, it was like inciting a riot, inciting some kind of violence. So they're becoming compelled to violence in some way. That could then lead into the outbreak of home invasions. So the whole thing is just kind of taking place non-sequentially. I think the workers are the home invaders. Yeah, or like the second or third or fourth generation of the of the I don't want to say zombie virus cuz I don't think they're zombies. They're not zombies in the more traditional sense, the more traditional use of the word. But they might sort of be zombie-esque. And also, what does any of this have to do with the thought forms? The thought form thing has just kind of been abandoned. Remember we were watching, uh, they were telling us all about thought forms? Where did that ever go? That kind of went nowhere. It's confirmed that the attacking and breaking into people's homes. Yes. Authorities have since confirmed that the attacks were, in fact, part of an organized criminal effort and have been organized attributed to a local anti-American militia group operating out of western Massachusetts called... Called what? Made numer- called what? Um... The news seems to believe this is an organized criminal effort carried out by some type of anti-American faction. All right, well, so much for my theory. If these are just lucid people that are breaking into people's homes... Did we get a did we get a spooky face in that scribble there? Let's look for spooky faces. Nope, no spooky faces. A American militia group operating out of western Massachusetts called Police have made numerous arrests in connection to militia and officials continue to release statements to assure the public that they are safe once again. We've seen a lot of credible information over the past couple weeks. Mount The investigation is still ongoing. We'll get closer to the by the day. Thankfully, due to the continued efforts of law enforcement, life has been able to return back to normal. Back, back to normal. To no- back to normal. To normal. To normal. To normal. To normal. To normal.
This ain't seeming so normal. Whoa, whoa! That baby does not look happy. That baby looks like two babies stuck together. Back to normal for residents of Berkshire County. Oh jeez, oh jeez. Okay, uh... Footage cuts out. We see two babies stuck together. They don't seem happy. Uh, and if that was a little too gross for any of you guys, then I apologize. I could, I could very easily imagine, uh, seeing that baby <laughs> being upsetting, um, so we won't go back to it. That poor baby. Or those poor two babies, however you want to think about it. I think we got something here. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, two people here. Photo caption, engaged couple Alex Marsh, 28 left, and Tiffany... Grizz Grizzaldi, 28, or 20, 20, I can't read it because that line is in the way. We'll say 28. Uh, together as they discuss the baffling loss of their unborn son. So these are the people who lost their baby. The baby who disappeared in womb, in utero. The, these events are only the tip of the iceberg, says Jim Melgreen a former police officer who now works as a private investigator and hosts a radio show centered around government transparency and accountability. There are horrifying reports of people, healthy grown adults, becoming deformed, growing extra limbs, teeth growing out of their scalp, people developing severe mental conditions like autism, <laughs> or even sicknesses. Uh... Okay. Also enter... Spliced is the couple who lost their baby mysteriously and a news and a newspaper clipping about people growing extra or people just people mutating. We'll say that. People m mutating. Physically. That's a $50 smile right there. Okay. The newscasters... Newscasters' face... Becomes creepy. And the word... Liar... Appears on screen. So he was lying. And what did he say? He said the news seems to be seems to believe this is an organized criminal effort carried out by some type of anti-American militia faction. Is that what he was lying about? That means that we could revert to our to our initial interpretation that it's people mutating or becoming zombified or something. I don't see why not. I don't see why not. Okay, now we're on tape eight. Experiencing well, technical difficulties, please stand by. Up, didn't it? I've been getting chewed out by our asshole CIA liaison for the past two hours. What the fuck happened? We're looking into it, sir, but we experienced new issues with the broadcast in our end, so our engineers believe that the signal was hijacked before we were reaching. I can't really hear what they're saying. I'm going to... Just for this video, I'm going to turn on uh, captions. Oh, but they're automated. Are they? Auto-generated and auto-translate. Hmm. When they're auto-generated, they're usually not very accurate. What the fuck happened? We're looking into it, sir, but we experienced new issues with the broadcast in our end, so our engineers believe that the signal was hijacked before we were reaching the transmitter, but once we started receiving phone calls from viewers, we switched to a backup transmitter. Okay, so... Broadcasters... 
angrily discussing how the news was hijacked. But by then, the hijacker had already said everything they wanted to say, hadn't they? Yes, sir. What a complete fuck up. They made up. What a complete load, load of bollocks. Concerning our most popular show. Max Hedrum? Which? Don. Where the fuck is he? I can't get hold of him, and he needs to get in here and read a statement to help clean up this fucking mess. Language. Uh, well, we've been trying to reach him. We've called him multiple times. We've tried his pager. We've asked around to see if anyone's heard from him, but nothing. I'm gonna say... Discussing how... Their programming was hijacked because i don't know if they're just if they're talking about the news broadcast that we just watched being hijacked or the episode of max headroom being hijacked which we saw earlier so it could be either or right now we've got jill standing in for him tonight if don doesn't show you've been to his house uh, well no i just thought that maybe he'd be upset if i did that Get in your fucking car and go to his fucking house. This guy is British. He's a wee Brit British, isn't it? You bring him into the studio. Do you understand? Please say in it. If he says in it, I'm going to get up and do jumping checks. There's some real powerful people depending on us right now. They need us to manage the response to these events. Not enough jumping this stream. Step it up, bold boy. Does this seem like a jelking stream to you, you spoiled brat? We're not jelking here. You must be wildin'. We're trying to be spooked by analog horror. There's nothing sexual about this. I'm waiting for this British man to say in it. Okay? You behave yourself. We need is it going wider than it already fucking has. So do what you need to do, or I'm gonna replace you with some producers who actually know how to produce a fucking show. Sorry, the file you are trying to access has been destroyed and can no longer be executed or retrieved. Please choose another file. Sorry, sorry, you said I'll take my file and the trying to destroy my trying. Sorry, oh, this per- Warning, anomalous file detected. This file should not exist. Are you sure you wish to proceed? Yes. Opening file. Arnold Rivers personal log. Final. Arnold Eugene Rivers, have we heard that name? Yes. Arnold Rivers was one of the construction workers in Mount Greylock who had the background in archaeology. Recording of Arnold Rivers. See, this is why we write things down. I might not have put that together if I wasn't taking notes right now. And I would have just been like, Arnold Rivers, who the fuck is that? 1987, about a quarter past nine at night. I was involved in the Morelli Construction Project at Mount Greylock. Morelli Construction Project. I was hired project. due to my background in anthropology and archaeology. I've worked to excavate a number of different historical sites. Paul Morelli took me on after securing a government contract for the Greylock project. I'm recording this because I believe my life is in danger, and I likely don't have a lot of time left. Okay. He believes his life is in danger. Now, if he's even recording this at all, that means whatever happened at that mountain, it must not have affected effectively zombified everybody. There were a few survivors, at least, because this guy survived. So, I need so to how bad was it really? My findings. On March 24th, our crew came across tunnels in the mountain that had a multitude of ancient markings and artifacts. On March 25th, Paul cleared the interior of the mountain Paul Rudd. and asked me, accompanied by a small crew, to look through the tunnels and record notes on what I was able to recognize. I was then to report to one of the project directors, named Frank Porter, to offer my perspective on our findings. I kept this to myself at the time, but what we discovered in that mountain was not normal. What? What was it? Not only did I see the impact it was having on the crew, 
that a certain aspect of my findings did not make any sense. Many of the artifacts were pre-colonial. Right. Some were from Native American tribes, but there were other artifacts. Some Mesoamerican and others were shockingly Clovis in nature. Clovis? Finding Clovis artifacts here means that people have been coming to Mount Greylock since at least 11,000 BCE. Am I supposed to know what Clovis means? Hey, Paul, what's up? Patrick, Clovis. fell asleep. Sorry, Max, I have no clue what's happening, but I'm happy to be here. And time to show the hit 2003 game Freedom Fighters again, Kissmark. Unfortunately, we're not doing... Unfortunately, you can't do multiple voices anymore, so Patrick's out. But thank you for the super chat regardless. Clovis was the first king of the Franks to unite all of the Frankish tribes under one ruler, changing the form of leadership from a group of petty kings to rule by a single king, and ensuring that the kingship was passed down to his heirs. But that wouldn't be 10,000 BC. He said 10,000 BC. Here we go. Clovis culture. Clovis culture is a prehistoric Paleo-American archaeological culture named for distinct stone and bone tools found in close association with Pleistocene fauna. Particularly two Colombian mammoths at Blackwater, lo Blackwater locality number one near Clovis, New Mexico. Clovis, New Mexico? The dates are correct. So like a little a little over 10,000 BC. So I guess when he says Clovis, it's just in reference to some kind of culture of people who lived like over 10,000 years ago. That would be a real long time ago. Recorded history is only about like 10,000 years old anyway, if even. Okay, so... There were a wide variety of types of cultural artifacts found in the tunnels at Mount Greylock from all over the world. Some dating back to 10,000 BC. Interesting. Interesting stuff. But that's not all, no. No? There are artifacts I found that could potentially be from even earlier. What? Paleo-American cultures that we have yet to even begin studying. What? What? And there were artifacts and writings left by the cultures that were pre-Columbian in nature. What? Transoceanic contacts prior to Columbus reaching the Americas has always been largely a theory, but but the artifacts in this mountain, they, they prove it. Ancient Chinese, Arabic, Indian, Roman, Spanish, Viking, even ancient Greek and Egyptian. No Italians. That they alone would change world history as we know it today. So people from all over the world in the in, in the ancient world were all coming to this mountain coming to the tunnels in, under this mountain was the mountain calling out to people throughout history in some way perhaps throughout history the mountain has been calling out to these different cultures? Question mark? The anthropologist in me was thrilled. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I figured it had to be a hoax. You're a hoax. I'm confident that it's all authentic. You're authentic. But my excitement was soon replaced with a looming fear and anxiety. How could such a place be so important to so many cultures for so long? 
There must be something immense here. Whatever it was. Well, that's why I left the project. <laughs> that's why you left the project? Because of a super interesting mystery? Why wouldn't that just intrigue you to, to study it further, you freak? Why are you so freaky freaky? This guy's a pervert, I can tell. I know, I know a pervert's face when I see one. This guy is very perverted. <sighs> Arnold, the coward, left the project for no good goddamn reason. The coward. The tunnels all connected to a series of chambers deep into the interior of the mountain. That's where the majority of the relics were found. There were old baskets of herbs and spices, pottery, weapons and armor, talismans, and other religious items, countless other things. But all of it was there purposely as offerings. Two. Okay, okay, okay. We're moving on to something else now. Um... Suddenly... We join an episode of... A detailed look into how our Earth's moon came to be. We join an episode... Of... Of a show called... Cosmic... Mysteries. GBS News. Mom Don Max Wright. is being mean again. He won't let us do Patrick anymore. Now I'm sad. I hate it here. I want to go home. Can you come pick me up? If we want to use the Plankton voice, we have to be careful to not overload it so that fewer Super Chats will be skipped. And I'm guessing that one of the ways that we can avoid overloading it is to not use Patrick and Squidward and, and SpongeBob anymore. And I think that should help. And no more sound effects either. Really, it's just all Plankton that we want anyway. You guys had fun with the other voices for a while. It was a cute little distraction for a while. But it, it, it just has to be Plankton. We all know it needs to be Plankton. GBS News, Dawn Wright Tonight, Night Hiking, Episode 13, Mount Greylock, Deep States, Episode 733. Okay. Cosmic Mysteries. What a name for a show. It was billions of years ago billions when our planet years. was still mostly fire and rock. Billions that a of years. A sized planet that had been drifting through our solar system collided directly with the Earth. Whoa! The impact was so powerful and violent Bonk. that the rogue planet Bonk. was into countless pieces of debris. Bonk! Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was there something in there? Did I see something for a single frame? Did I? Let me tell you, that's one hell of a bonk. Um. Not sure what that could be, but. I guess that's nothing. Eh, it's probably nothing. That a Mars sized planet that had been drifting through our solar system collided directly with the Earth. The impact was so powerful and violent. That the rogue planet was blown into countless pieces of debris. This debris collected to form our moon. Many of the pieces of the unknown planet remain inside the earth to this day. Many of piece many pieces of the unknown planet. So billions of years ago, a planet collided with our own chunks of the unknown planet may still be on Earth today. Dot 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 dot. Perhaps forming Mount Greylock? Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. It's more likely than you think. <laughs> oh, it's more likely than you think. You don't know. Could happen. Adam Police Department, dispatcher Carrie speaking. Okay. Call to a police department. 
Let's see what's in store. Um, yes, I'm calling to report a break-in at my co-worker's house. What is your name, sir? My name is Liam Hollander. Okay, Liam, you said this was your co-worker's house. What is your co-worker's address? Uh, it's on uh, Parker, Parker Hill Road in Adams, uh, number 491. 491 Parker Hill Road, is that right? Yes. Okay, can you tell me, is anybody hurt? Liam, are you still with me? Come on, Liam. Is anybody hurt? <laughs> ooh, oh, oh, ooh, yeah, oh, ooh. Liar! Oh, he's not looking good. And I witnessed many altars constructed out of the mountain stone. <sighs> you know what? So far, I have to say, I think Wendigoon might have been right. I think this might be better than all the other analog horrors. Um, I think I might like it better than Local 58, which I think was my favorite. I think I think before this, Local 58 was my favorite. I think this might have surpassed it. Um, break in, that's two words. Arnold con continues... Describing animal sacrifices on altars within the mountain. Man, I would not want to go inside of that spooky, spooky mountain. Along with evidence of mass animal and human sacrifice. And humans. And the carvings in the walls of these sacrificial chambers. I couldn't recognize a single familiar symbol. And it... Made me sick to even look at them. Let me be clear. I am not, nor have I ever been, a religious man. I am, I am. There's something in that mountain. I am, I am. Something people of countless cultures over the history of our planet have been worshipping, but I don't know why. But I could feel it. Whatever's down there, I could feel it. It was like being trapped in a fever dream. I swear I could hear a voice, and even felt compelled to go further, to speak to whatever's down there. I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't been right since. I, I keep hearing this droning in my head. Okay. Arnold! <laughs> Arnold! Arnold! Arnold, stay with me, Arnold. Arnold says... The interior chamber of the mountain has, and I quote, a weird vibe. Got a weird vibe in that mountain. Felt as if voices were whispering to him. Now he <laughs> has dementia. <laughs> dementia. Needs an ibuprofen? This motherfucker needs an ibuprofen. Stay with me, Arnold. Arnold! You got work to do, Arnold. Don't crap out on me now. Jesus. All day and night. I, I can't sleep. Like that? that? That doesn't matter right now. I informed Mr. Porter in my report that the archaeological findings in the mountain are of monumental historical importance. Honestly, I've been feeling the same way recently. More to be discovered, and I recommended discontinuing construction there. But it's not as though I have any authority over this project. I fully expected to be ignored. Mr. Porter called me on the evening of March 28th, and we spoke on the phone briefly. It was as I thought. He disregarded my concerns. I informed him that I wasn't going to return to the site. He this is what they found when they, when, when they did the big dig in Boston. <laughs> said I was a valuable asset to the project, even offered me a substantial raise, and wanted me to lead a specifically organized team 
that would clear the tunnels of artifacts before excavation would continue. Typical. I, quote unquote, could be responsible for the biggest historical finding of all time, he said. Yeah, you want to take credit for it, huh? I won't put a price on my sanity or my health, especially after seeing what was happening to the crew. Now loading. Morally Greylock event. Group C. Survivor data. Profile for patient B3590. Hey, it's Fabio. Rockford, Thomas. Al formations. Notes. Communicative. Patient prone to spontaneous violent outbursts. Treatment of heavy sedation recommended. Only communicate while patient is restrained or via intercom. Now loading. Profile for patient. B9231. Washington, Samuel. Al formations. Whoa. Notes. Communicative. Patient suffers from constant state of severe paranoia and delusions, resulting in unpredictable violent outbursts. Okay, if he looks like that, and he has unpredictable violent outbursts and cannot be reasoned with, am I really that far out of line for saying he's a zombie? That's a zombie. This is a zombie I'm looking at. There's nothing else that I'm looking at right now other than a zombie. These people are being zombified. It's like a Resident Evil style zombie. You know, he doesn't have like the gray skin um that zombies sometimes have. Uh workers I I mean I I must have already written this, but workers in the mountain were becoming like horrible mutated zombies. That's a zombie motherfucker right there if I ever saw one. Standard treatment ineffective. High dose xylazine is recommended. Only communicate while patient is restrained or via intercom. Now loading. Profile for patient. B6670. Ramon. Ramon. Scene Herrera. What happened Al to him, I wonder? Ooh. <laughs> Uncommunicative. Patient appears to be in catatonic state. Warning, patient may sit up very suddenly, without provocation, to projectile vomit at any staff in area. Projectile patient vomit, that is a classic zombie thing. Mexican guy pukes. <laughs> Everyone knows that zombies projectile vomit. It's iconic zombie. He's a spitter, yeah, exactly. Classic zombie. You know what? I'll say Hispanic guy pukes. It's a little more sensitive. A little more culturally sensitive. Ugh. You hate the word puke? Puke. Ugh, I hate that word. Why? What's wrong with puke? You know what? Puke is nowhere near as bad as the word barf. When I hear the word barf, I want to barf. Are you kidding me? Since vomit is extremely corrosive and emits nerve gas. All he, his vomit is extremely corrosive? That's disgusting. Mince ineffective. Studies must be conducted with full anti-corrosive gear and air purifying respirator equipped on all staff involved. Now loading. Profile for patient. B8816. George Costanza. Fleming, Charles. Al formations. Ooh. Notes. Uncommunicative. Warning. Jeez. Patient will attack on site. Do not interact. Immunity to pain. Patient exhibits cannibalistic tendencies. Zombie. All treatments ineffective. Zombie. Immediate euthanasia recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. B4041. Zombie. Oakhurst, Scott. Al formations. Oh, jeez. Communicative. Communi They're just getting worse and worse. Also, I love this. I love the direction this is going in. But it's getting farther and farther away from the thought form stuff. Like, we watched maybe one or two of these videos being about the thought forms. And then it's just become increasingly irrelevant. And now it's just looking like it's a it's some kind of a zombie story, which is cool. Zombies are cool. Um. 
but I'm still struggling to understand the relevance with the thought forms. That maybe the zombies are thought forms? None of them are real? They don't exist? The zombies are all in our mind? That doesn't seem accurate, though. That seems wrong. So I'm not going to say that. Repeat with caution. Warning, That's so patient scary. actively pretends to be benevolent and friendly. Strong homicidal and cannibalistic tendencies. Killed and partially consumed six staff members on April 6th, 87. Patient laughed hysterically during the attack. Some are cannibalistic. Classic zombie. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia or permanent restraint for further study recommended. Now loading. Profile for Here we go again. B7992. Kowalski, Edward. Now formations. Here it comes. Oh. Notes. Communicative. Hazardous. Warning. Patient possesses inhuman power of suggestion and influence over others. Do not interact. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. B1584. Rafferty, John. It's like a weird droning sound that's picking up. I don't know how that makes me feel. Sounds like formations. an airplane landing. Ooh. Notes. Uncommunicative. Hazardous. Patient appears to be deceased. No vital signs. Patient's body not decomposing. Warning. Yeah, well, if he's uncommunicative and he's deceased, then that's par for the course. Usually people are uncommunicative when, <laughs> when they're dead. <laughs> That's typical. That just Staff happens sometimes. Ill after even brief time spent in patient's room. Illness disregards protective suiting. Immediate quarantine required for all victims. Mortality rate post exposure currently 92%. Survivor subject to rapid physical and mental malformations. All treatments ineffective. Immediate remote euthanasia recommended. I consider myself incredibly lucky to not be in that condition right now. Oddly. He would have accepted my second refusal, wished me luck in my future endeavors, but before I could say anything else, he'd hung up. But it seemed I'd made the right choice. I heard something awful happened up at Mount Greylock. Yeah, sort of. And then simultaneously, there were all of these things that have been happening around the mountain. The home invasions, the dead bodies that fell from the sky over Cheshire, the pregnancy phenomena, so many other unexplainable things. Dead bodies were, according to Arnold, according to our old friend Arnie, dead bodies were also falling from the sky, which we didn't know up until now. That's new information. They all must be related, and I've been trying to figure out how. I've connected with a local investigator who's been trying to get to the bottom of this. I've shared with him everything I have, though I feel that I've been being watched. I feel a looming threat that I can't really explain. You're a looming threat. Would the government really send someone to kill me over this? Probably. I feel like I'm paranoid. Like I've lost some of my mind. But I came home from the grocery store the other day, and my front door was unlocked. And I know I had locked it before I left. I scanned my entire house for traces of anything, but found nothing out of the ordinary. I even checked and replaced all of the light bulbs. <laughs> oh, God. Relax, Arnold. Saying it out loud like this. Saying what out loud? Makes me realize how crazy I sound. Oh, all of it? I've always been a rational man. There's a logical explanation behind everything. Hmm. Well, then explain it, smartass. Well, I'm glad that I put all of this into a recording. Perhaps that was what I needed to snap me out of this. Honestly, I feel much better just talking about it. Um. <laughs> this can't be. Oh what? My God. What? What? No, 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 no. Camcorder. Oh, where's the damn camcorder? There he is. Thank God. Someone breaks. There's someone in his basement? Oh god, oh god. Oh no, oh god. Arnold, get out of there! I'm inside my bedroom closet. Arnold, get out of there! And I'm hiding in here with my files. If something happens to me and you find any tapes or files somehow, please.
please, bring it to the investigator, Jim and Malcolm North Adams. That goes for this video footage as well. Arnold, you gotta get out of there. <laughs> Something happened. Okay, we hear screaming. Hang on. Someone breaks during the recording. Someone breaks into Arnold's basement. We hear a female voice. I don't know if it's an adult or a child, but it sounds female. Voice crying out, no, no, no. Arnold, be a man and go save your daughter. Be a man, Arnold. I'm going to puke. Is this going to make you puke? Don't puke. No puking allowed. Come on. Come on. What's going to happen? Come on out. It's the police. Oh, it's a police. What a relief. Ooh. I don't think that guy's the cops. I don't think he's with the police. <laughs> I don't think he's with the police. Hang on. I want to see that spooky face. I don't think he's with the cops at all. Give me your badge number, officer. Whoa, his head is huge! Yeah, not a cop. Not a cop! Nice try. I know what you are. You're a fed! <laughs> Oh, we have our fun here. We have our fun. <laughs> okay, so we're going to say voice outside claims to be the police. Hang on. Is that a child saying it's a monster and then laughing? It's a monster. Yeah. Somebody save the baby! Voice outside... Accessing GV. Hang on, hang on. Voice outside claims to be the police, but is clearly... but... but... busts in and is clearly some kind of big spooky. A child's voice is heard claiming it's a monster, which probably, I don't think it's because there was a child in the room. I think it's because the big spooky was likely imit Imitating a child's voice. That's my theory, anyway. Oof, we just got a lot of info. Thought forms could not be farther away from whatever we're doing right now. I wonder if that whole video about the thought forms was, <laughs> was kind of done before the guy who made this knew what direction he wanted to take this in? Perhaps. And then eventually he was like, you know what? I, I want this to be a story about zombies and not thought forms. Not tulpas and thought forms. So he just went in, a, went in an entirely different direction. 
Just did a, a, a complete 180. Hi, Maxi Poo. Well, hey, how you doing? You don't need to call me Maxi Poo, but that's fine that you did. Okay. Tape 9. S properties 101 WRAV FM radio station date of broadcast December 13 1963 segment announcement of the national access initiative somebody just said I hate how well done this series is why would you hate it for that I love how well done this series is and it has so few views I don't think a single one of these videos has broken a million views I don't think a single one of them has broken 500,000 views. I wonder if it's because it's still, like, kind of, like, relatively unknown. I wonder if we're getting in on the ground floor with this. <laughs> because it's too scary? Yeah, I could see uh, somebody not liking it because it's too scary. Very underrated. Yeah, I agree. This is very underrated. Um, I definitely like it more than The Walton Files. I th actually, I think I said I like it more than anything. I think I said Wendigoon was right. This is the best. I don't know if it gets any better than this. Tape he 9, let's do it. Back. In one of his first acts after his historic succession, President Lyndon B. Johnson's administration has announced an upcoming program that will revolutionize communication and bring critical home electronics into every American household. Sweet. The National Access Initiative, as it's been named, is a program designed to ensure that all citizens have equal access to vital communication tools and ways to stay informed, fostering connectivity, security, and unity across the nation. Under this groundbreaking initiative, eligible American households will receive packages containing a myriad of electronics so that citizens may stay properly engaged with one another and remain knowledgeable regarding important events. Electronics such as telephones, televisions, and radios. These packages will also include items aimed at keeping families safe with devices such as smoke alarms, burglar alarms, and even flashlights. Even flashlights? Can they afford that? Individuals to not only stay involved in their communities, but to remain prepared for any emergency as well. President Johnson himself was quoted as saying that in this era of progress and innovation, it is crucial for every American to have the tools necessary as they navigate the challenges of modern life in an era of ever-increasing technological dependence. These so... Govern... <laughs> seems absurd. This is not the kind of thing that government would do, but... Government is sending people free electronics? Uh... Okay. Where's my Nintendo Switch? I mean, I already have one, but I would love to. U.S. government, where's my PS5? I'll take one. These electronics packages are being made available to American households Go for a new a phone. ...with world-renowned technology manufacturer, Simeodyne USA. President, whoa, 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 let's go back. JFK was sending out phones and VCRs and shit? Assassin kills Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson sworn in. I remember that. Reading about it. President Kennedy says no to Simeodyne USA. I wish I could read that. It's so blurry. In a surprising move that has left many Americans perplexed, President Kennedy has informed to engage refused 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 to engage in a partnership with Simeodyne USA okay i can just barely read it which has been actually that might be all i got um yeah i got nothing i got nothing with this that right there um jfk Refuses, refused to form a partnership with Simeo Don. Oh my god. This, this is borderline tasteless. And then it goes to this. Are they suggesting that this is why JFK was shot? Jeez. But you know what? That's the kind of tasteless shit I love. 
then later gets his brains splattered. Coincidence? I think not. Well, all you conspiracy nuts, this is it. This is how it happened. This is why he died. He said no to Simeodyne and... You know, the next thing you know... His brain's all over the sidewalk. That's how it all went down. You can't prove it didn't happen. You can't prove that's not what what happened. Governor of Texas wounded. M Marxist accused of murder? Okay. <laughs> Such a weird thing to... That's a weird... Th Imagine if you're like one of his relatives and you watch this and you're like, That's not why he died. That's not what happened. I was there. The technology giant's expertise in creating cutting-edge revolutionary technologies over the past decades has made them a household name, and their gracious contribution to this initiative ensures that the devices provided will be of the highest quality. Somebody in bed. Further enhancing the experience and benefits for American citizens. When asked for a quote during a press conference earlier this week, President of Simeodyne USA, Percival C. Rothwell, had a lot to say. Ooh. The National Access Initiative represents a milestone in our nation's journey towards progress and inclusivity. It's a reflection of the American government and Simeodyne USA's unwavering commitment to empower every American citizen, regardless of age, location, or income, with the tools and resources needed to thrive in the electronic age. Sure. Are gay. Still don't have a television in the house. This means they are less informed and are unable to respond to emergencies as quickly. Is this a dude from Simeodyne? Is that who this guy is? So, it's not the government that was wrong. Simeodyne is sending people free electronics. Uh, okay. JFK refused to form a partnership with Simeodyne. Later gets his brain splattered. Should be an E in there. Coincidence? I think not. Simeodyne seems to really, really want people to have electronic devices in their homes. A much greater percentage of households have no smoke alarms to alert them in the event of a fire. <clears throat> Perhaps the most shocking of all, 29% of Americans don't even have a telephone in their home meaning they're unable to call for aid or even just contact friends or family members. They are left disconnected. For decades, people of all kinds have wondered what it is we're working on at any given time inside Simeodyne. And for decades, we've kept it all quite secret. But I'll let you in on a little something. What's that? I'm here. Oh, hi. Kennedy didn't go for it. <laughs> so I killed him. He assured me he was a medical. Or was that just more of your bullshit? Well, he's gonna fucking expose our whole plan for the NAI program. He is gonna do that. The meeting couldn't have gone worse. If that fucking Nick thinks he's gonna... Whoa! Whoa! Language? You don't call so you don't say that. Jeez. You don't have to bring this to a racial place. Oh my goodness gracious. I don't like you anymore. I didn't like you already, but still. 
Why? Why do that? Why? Why? Just why? You know what? You need a lesson in tolerance, mister. Hey, Don. It's got another thing coming. Well, we're not the only ones he's pissed off lately. After rejecting Operation Northwoods, and then that executive order... <laughs> my, my dad was Irish and his name was Mick. Yeah, that's, a, that's where they got the term. <laughs> they got the term from your dad. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. I'm joking, of course. I'm allowed to make that joke. I'm part Irish, too. Not the only ones he's pissed off lately. <laughs> After rejecting Operation Northwoods, and then that executive order involving the Federal Reserve, there are a lot of snakes in the grass. And it's about time that Kennedy got bit. At Simeon USA, we're building the future. And as the great, great grandson of our company's founder and its current president, I'll tell you one irrefutable fact. I'm gay. The most important one. All roads lead to connectivity. Without connectivity, we have no future. The more isolated individuals are from one another, the weaker they are. It's sort the of true, yeah. defeated they are and the less likely they are to see the value of their own lives. Hey, Han, have you seen the car key? Humanity has stood many times at the precipice of extinction. And the only reason we are still here today is because we stood there together. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! What was that I saw? I saw a spooky face and I didn't like it. Jewel! Yeesh! What am I even looking at there? <laughs> I don't like. I don't like. I don't trust like that. I don't trust like that. Placenta man, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we got words. The NIA program was a trap. They are watching, they are listening. Fuck LBT, fuck Simeodyne. I won't be your lab rat anymore. Okay. So. Likely because they were using these devices spy on the American people. It's bad. You don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Mm -mm -mm. Don't do it. We make a promise to continue to support you into the future as well. Whether it's from a lack of infrastructure or a lack of income. No one should be restricted access to potentially life-saving and life-enhancing technology. And this, this is only the beginning. You're only we the beginning. so much more planned so that Americans can all truly be equal in our society. Security, connectivity, accessibility. It is our belief that it is these three factors that make America the best country in the world. USA. 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 Spooky shadow. Oh no. Oh no. 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 Don't open that. No. 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 We can leave that closed. Oh, shoot. God damn. <laughs> God dang! Well, we got a bunch of creeps out in the woods. Stated ...that these monumental benefits won't only be made available to American households, but to police and fire departments, schools, and to small businesses as well. The Johnson administration has stated that while they are going to begin launching this landmark program right away, it will first be made available only in select areas as construction crews from coast to coast prepare to establish important infrastructure that will support the National Access Initiative program. Well, wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So a few, uh, a few faces there, I think. We briefly see a bunch of 
perverts out in the woods wearing masks. Excuse me. Can we go back? Yeah. Oh, it was just that. Which we've already seen. There's nothing else? Nope. Yep, it was just that. Okay. Oh, hi. Are you a skeleton? Hi. Oh, God. What? What? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you come closer? I am awake. He wants to borrow the dictionary. <laughs> shut up. You shut up. You shut your goddamn ass up. I can't hear any of what you're saying. I'm sorry, I just can't hear you. Papyrus. Yeah, it's Papyrus from from Undertale. <laughs> That's him. He's back. I'm gonna have to watch this again so I can understand. I'm gonna have to turn the. I'm gonna have to watch this again and turn the volume up so I can understand what he's saying. Too scary, please turn it off, Max. Oh, we're gonna watch it again. Does not have captions. We can turn the captions on too, see if that helps. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, that's, that's me when I wake up in the morning. Where's my coffee? Okay, I want to watch. Let me turn. I'm going to turn the volume up and we can watch that one more time. Just one more time. And I'm going to turn the closed captioning on. Just one more time. <laughs> Bro, I should have seen that coming. Oh, you should always see it coming. Hi. I am awake. Wake up, Katie? Katie is the name of the child, yeah. Okay. We see a spooky skeleton man t 
talking to a child named Katie. For my class. This is so hard to make out what they're both saying. Oh, there you are. Who, who are you? I am your imaginary friend. Imaginary friend. My imaginary friend? But I can imagine you. You must have begun your I am. You must have be she said I didn't imagine you and he said you must have because here I am. He tells Katie he's her imaginary friend. She says she didn't imagine shit. doctor's office place that I had to go to. To me, that suggests Katie probably had to use the thought form, finally thought forms are back, thought form manifester. So they bring Katie in, they strap her into the machine, nothing happens, then a few days later the, uh, the spooky skeleton man shows up. I think you might be right, Katie. Can you guys hear that at all? I only turned it up for me. I don't know if you guys can hear it at all. <laughs> don't touch my glasses. Katie, don't do it. Katie, no. Katie, no. Katie, you idiot. Amateur move, Katie. Amateur move. And now look. Okay, so. Spooky skeleton man offers... Katie, her glasses, she falls for it, like a dipshit, <laughs> and uh, likely gets eaten, or in the very least murdered, and killed, and dead, and not alive anymore. Katie, you ignorant ass motherfucker. I tried to warn you. say that their current projections for a nationwide release are for some time between mid-1966 and early 1967. Citizens will be mailed informational packets regarding the National Access Initiative. Somebody said, why do you say skeleton like that? Do I say skeleton weird? I swear, not a stream goes by where you guys don't accuse me of pronouncing a word weird. <laughs> skeleton. Skeleton. I might say skeleton sometimes, but I could also say skeleton, or skeleton. Depends on how fast I'm talking. 
Well, it's a new thing to feel self-conscious for the rest of my life about, I guess. Thanks a lot. Including information on how to apply as the program becomes available in our area. Oh. Thank you. You say it like a British person? I feel like I probably say it like a British person when I'm when I'm talking faster. Where if I was just speaking at a normal rate, or I was talking slower, I might say skeleton. But that's just me. Chrisaldi, we're not able to get to the phone, so please leave a message after the tone and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Boop. Hello, there's a creepy skeleton in my house. Okay, tape 10. We're almost done. We just have 10, 11, and 12 left. I'm gonna assume this is ongoing, which means that we're not going to get an ending today, which is a little disappointing. Um, Greylock notes. But also, I don't know Whoa. how likely that was. Did it just say Grandma Brownie's Chocolate Chunker Wunker Bunkers now with even bigger chunks of chocolate chunks? I think it did. I mean, that's the secret to all of this. They went into that mountain, they found the Chocolate Chunker Wunker Bunkers. Buried away, deep underground. The, the Chocolate Chunker Wunker Bunkers were the result of a planet colliding with our own. And then leaving behind some chocolate chunks. What is that? A, a dead bird or a dead rat? This video is 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, hang on. Oh my, the last one is a half hour. Uh, do I want to go for another hour of this? I might have to take a break. I'm getting tired. I can't believe the last one is a half hour. Oof, I'll have to think about it. As this is playing, I'll think about it. Okay, somebody is filming in the woods and finds a dead rat. That's a dead rat. Put it down. Yeah, put it down. It's dirty. It's got germs, it's got mites. I'd go for an hour with you. Thank you. Thank you, Gooby. <laughs> I'd go for an hour with you too, Gooby. Hey, babe. I'm just checking in. Hey, baby. Could you please give me a call as soon as you can? Don't worry about work, either. Please. You're way more important, okay? Okay. I love you. Ah. Bye. I love you, too. Um, after we lost the baby, um, I stayed home for almost a month. We both took a heart, but... Okay. How is the man with the amazing disappear. Are there two S's in disappear? I have to know. I have to fucking know. Disappear. Nope. There's two P's. Two P's. There we go. The man with the amazing disappearing baby. 
speaks to someone apparently being interviewed. Just really worried about Tiffany. She seems to probably be getting worse with time. Tiffany, his wife is getting worse. Plowed by the milkman. You've been no. screwing the milkman. You've been screwing the milkman. I'm getting a bit worried, so. She's been screwing the milkman. Call me back, okay? Love you. Whoa. Oh, was she summoning Dippy Dog? Okay, I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm gonna head home. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm kind of freaking out. Okay, his wife is getting worse. He called at lunch. She wouldn't pick up. <laughs> Likely because she was summoning Dippy Dog. <laughs> it always comes back to that damn Dippy Dog. I'll be there soon. I love you. Hey, Wolfo, what's up? What's up? Dr. Heinrich Albrecht, Medical Heinrich. Examiner, Westfield. May 19th, 1987, 3.23pm. Intake report for Tiffany Elaine Marie Crisaldi. She's pretty. Caucasian female, age 28, 29, 26, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, She is my wife. My wife. This autopsy will be conducted at the request of the Adams Police Department. Whoa. The internal evaluation reveals a resinous black substance adhered to the face, neck, and upper thoracic region. Samples have been obtained. Uh, additionally, the eyes are fully retracted. These observations are aside from any traditional indicators of struggle or violence as a cause of death. Okay. When she was found, she had black gunk all over her face. A rigor and rigor mortis align with the estimated time of death. Very demonic. Equally concerning is the absence of hemorrhaging in the surrounding tissues. Due in part to this, I have been able to ascertain that this symbol was carved into the skin post mortem. By Dippy Dog. In regards to timing, based on my analysis, I would say the cuts were likely made several hours after death. <clears throat> Photographs and casts have been made for further analysis. I'll be consulting with forensic anthropologists and symbology experts to better understand the nature and potential significance of the symbol. In summary, while the exact cause of death is yet to be determined, determined? the carving that requires the initiation of an immediate and in-depth investigation. 
This aspect of the case should be treated with utmost priority due to its unusual and unnerving nature. Okay, Tiffany, we're recording now. Okay. So, Tiffany, you just had your sixth birthday, didn't you? Yeah. Did you have a party? Yeah. How was it? Good. That's good. You're awfully quiet today. Are you seeing them again? Yes. Is Tiffany the name of the woman who lost the baby? Is, th is this Tiffany when she was a child? Or is this a, a new character entirely? The little girl, the little girl from the last video was named Katie. But I also don't remember the adult woman's name, the one who lost the baby. What was her name? Did we ever get a name? It's Tiffany. Let me scroll back. See if I can. Oh my gosh, I've written so damn much. Dialogue between a woman meeting with her doctor. The woman is naming her baby Max. That's my name. Suddenly the baby disappears during an ultrasound. Lady is distraught by the amazing disappearing baby. <laughs> the amazing disappearing baby! Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to assume that it was Tiffany. So this is an interview. So now we're treated... Now we're treated to an interview with Tiffany as a child. Um, and I'm also going to scroll up here. And I'm going to write a pregnant woman named, named Tiffany. You hear a dialogue between a pregnant woman named Tiffany meeting with her doctor. I don't think I've ever known anybody named Tiffany in my entire fucking life. Not even one. Can you see them right now? What about a bathroom break in a minute? Yes. I can hold it. I'm a big boy. Where are they? Where are they, Tiffany? Can you see them now? There. Everywhere. Hang on, hang on. There. Can you see them today? Are you seeing them again? Yes. Tiffany was apparently Can you see them right now? Seeing something. Yes. Slash Where are they? Someone. Thought forms? Tulpas? Where are they, Tiffany? Zombies? They're everywhere. Every Tiffany I've ever met has been a bitch. Maybe. For my home archives. Today is May 19, 1987. Time is 8.03 p.m. I conducted an examination of Miss Tiffany Crisaldi today. Her body arrived shortly before I was to leave the office for the day, but... Yes, Tiffany, uh, ti th those are the, those two characters are the same. They are not different characters, okay. The woman is named Tiffany. Though it seems misfortune loomed over the proceedings. Electrical flickers and inexplicable drops and spikes in room temperature. Uh, repairs may be required. you do? Sarah mentioned that she heard what sounded like a woman crying. Oh no. Coming from the direction of the cooler. Okay. I After Tiffany's corpse is loaded into the morgue, 
They heard crying coming from within. That's well spooky. That's some spooky ass shit. You don't want to hear that. I called her a crazy bitch and I left. And I continued cleaning up on my own. I didn't dare to tell her that I heard it too. You heard it too. That's right, you heard it too. Well, why gaslight her then? Why not just admit that she was correct? Oh, that's so creepy. Okay. Are you ready, Tiffany? I think so. That's so creepy. Are you nervous? Yeah. Okay. I'll need you to follow my instructions, okay, Tiffany? As long as you do that, everything will be fine. Can you do that for me? Okay. Good. I'm going to play some sounds that will help you through this exercise. Good. Now close your eyes. I w you know, I would say that's music, but whatever. <laughs> Come on, don't play trash. Pass the ox cord. I want you to picture yourself standing outside your house in your front yard. It's a beautiful day out with big fluffy clouds and a blue sky. It's a beautiful day no in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be now mine? Now look down at the grass around you. Won't and watch you how be each mine? bird moves in a gentle breeze. Now look forward and see your house. And look around and see the trees around your yard. Watch how the breeze affects the leaves as it passes through. Make the wind blow a little harder, enough so the branches are swaying a little bit. You can hear all the rustling of the leaves around you. I have to pee. Wind calms down now, and you begin walking very slowly towards the front door of your house. Step. 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 And with each step you take, it looks like the day's getting later and later. Why are you trying to... <laughs> Soon the golden rays of the sunset are shining against your house. This is not going to relax the this child. Closer now, but you it still sounded like you're trying to freak her out. To go. Step. 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 And now you're only three steps from the door. Step. The sun Step. vanishes behind Step. the trees, going down. Step. The stars begin twinkling in the sky above, and the moon shines its soft glow over everything around you. Step. Step. You arrive at the front door. Reach out your hand, turn the doorknob, and open the door. And? The house looks like it always does at night time, except you're the only one here now. You take off your shoes. First the right shoe. Then the left shoe. Then the third shoe. <laughs> Shut up, you Max. Can feel the your feet. You can smell the familiar aroma of your house. You have three feet, right? Is in the place. You are alone. Uh, I'm getting to delirious. Go to your bedroom now. You come to the stairs and begin to walk up. Hold on to the bad things you got. Letting your hands slide up. Step. 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 You reach the second floor hallway. Everything is in its proper place. You are alone. Nobody else is here with you. You look to the right and you can see your bedroom door closed at the end of the hall. And this man should not be allowed around children. Calmly towards it. 
You see the door coming closer with each step. You can see the pink flower stickers that you put on it. Too. The P went to your brain, Max. The yeah, maybe. Wooden sign that reads, Tiffany. The almighty <laughs> three shoe <laughs> beating. I can't believe I got step. that reference. Step. There you withstand the almighty step. three shoe beating. Step. You're at your bedroom door now. You should you just have Rolf interview the child. The door and turn. Laugh the has many doors, Tiffany Criswaldi. Looks just like it did the last you saw it. You see the colorful quilt on your bed. You see your small white dresser with all the stickers and scuff marks, just like always. Your stuffed animals are all resting by your purple toy box. You feel comfortable. You feel safe. You are alone. You walk into a room, and that's when you can see something different that's never been there before. Tell me what you see. A third shoe. It's... It's a door next to my window. That's right. It's a door. How did he know? What does the door look like, Tiffany? It, it looks black. It has weird marks on it. The wood looks weird. Walk to the door and open it. I'm scared. Do it. Doesn't matter if you're scared. Do it, Tiffany! You must open the door. Tiffany, don't be a coward. Good job, Tiffany. Now tell me what's on the other side of the door. It's a small room. Somebody's in there. No, Tiffany. It's Ralph alone. from Ed, Ed and Eddie. No. <laughs> He's gonna no. give me a three shoe beating. There's someone here. He's facing away from me. He's standing and tall. He's very tall. Tiffany, you are alone. Nobody else is there. Now tell me what else is in the room. Right, well, Tiffany's giving us a different answer then. The screen so. is all fuzzy, and the tall man is watching it. Tiffany, I want you to focus on removing the man from your mind. When I snap my fingers, he will be gone. Okay, so... Uh... Back in the past... Playing the shitty games that suck ass, a therapist hypnotizes <laughs> hypnotizes Tiffany into trying to release her hallucinations the whole point of this hypnosis session is to try to get her to stop seeing things so to speak Bro loves hypnotizing children. Well, hypnotism can be helpful, though. It's not, hypnotism isn't always just inherently malicious. And also, you can't really hypnotize somebody into doing something they don't want to do anyway. It doesn't work like that. Hypnosis is not mind control. Um. You will be alone. Click. The man's shaking. No, he's His still there. His body is cracking. Okay, Tiffany, I'm going to count down from five. It's not working. When I snap my fingers, you will return to the real world. Five. You're feeling more awake. He's now. turning around. It's not. Four. It's not Everything working. He's looking at me. He sees me. Three, Tiffany. You can feel the chair you're sitting in again. Two. Everything around you fades to the blackness behind you. One, full control. Tiffany, get out of there! Zero, we're awake, Tiffany. You'll return to reality now. Whoa! Is that Elaine from Seinfeld? I think I just saw Elaine. I think I just saw Elaine. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Nope, it's uh, it's adult Tiffany, I think. This is adult Tiffany. I thought it was Elaine. <laughs> Elaine jump scare. <laughs> yeah. We got an Elaine jump scare, lads. You hate it, you don't like to see the Elaine jump scare, but once in a while you get one. Uh, 
Yeah, that's just her as an adult, right? And this is and and the this is when she's dead. And she has the black gunk on her face. Classic. Dead rat. No, ew, yuck, ew, yucky. Oh, it's. It's all uh, rigidified. No, don't cut it. This is how we cut into the rat. It's been laying out for a while if it's that stiff. And upon opening the rat inside, we find the Elaine jump scare. Gun digest. Okay, hang on. Some sicko is cutting open a rat with a pile of books in the background labeled Gun Digest. What's in there? You're gonna open it open. <laughs> You're gonna open it up and M&Ms are gonna fall out? Oh wait, there's something. A cassette? A cassette tape? He pulls out a cassette tape. Pops it into a Walkman. Did they call those things Walkman? <laughs> Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. They used to call those Walkman, right? Because you would walk while you would listen to it. You could listen to music while walking. What a novel concept. Nobody had ever listened to music while walking before. Not really. I'll take it. Okay, now this is the same... That symbol... This symbol... Um... We see a symbol... That... Appears to be... The same symbol... that was carved into Tiffany's corpse while a recording addresses somebody named Jim. What are the odds that Jim was the name of Tiffany's husband? Probably not likely. I think her husband was named something else. I think, it, I think her husband was named Gregory or something. Does that mean we haven't heard the name Jim before? Who is Jim? If we're getting this symbol, that means that whoever is sending Jim this message is probably the... the same cult slash organization slash whatever that killed Tiffany. Definitely Alexander. Her husband's name was Alexander. Okay. I fucking love air conditioning. Who oh boy, that's a that's a blast from the past. More crying from the morgue. Oh no. 
Oh no. Open it. Let it let them out. Open it up. Let them out. That fucker ain't dead. Oh my god, that's creepy. <laughs> the face. <laughs> Tiffany, you doing alright? Well, I guess you're dead. Okay, tape 11. This one is 2 minutes and 44 seconds. We're good on this one. Oof, that ending was spooky! Okay. Tape 11. God, that was such a spooky ending. <laughs> Elaine, you don't look so good. You know what? This whole story would have been better if instead of Tiffany, it was just Elaine from Seinfeld. Is there a Seinfeld-themed analog horror yet? Well, why not? Why not? Could be a million-dollar idea right there. Wolfa wants attention. Shush. Shush. Hello. Wolfo, this is called Analog Horror. Are you interested? Don't, don't you on that. Don't. Get another creeper video. Better not play trash. Better be something good on there. was it? We got nothing from that. Okay, this video is 33 minutes. What do you guys think? You want me to watch it? You guys want me to, want me to watch one more video if the video is 33 minutes? It's also the last video. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Please first. Yes. You're the devil's son. Yeah. Uh -huh. Please let me sleep. No, I'm not going to stop just because you want to go to sleep. Okay, it looks like we're getting more yes than no. Um... So we can, I guess we can watch it. If it's just, if it's one more half hour, I can tough it out. But, um, I'm going to take a break because I have to pee and I might want to change my shirt. I have to pee, I have to stretch, maybe change my shirt. We'll see. All right, hang on. I'll be back.
Okay. You guys enjoying that relaxing footage? Actually, you know what? I guess I was supposed to use this. The chat was being lascivious while you were gone. Well, shame on you. I guess I was supposed to use this. This is what I usually <laughs> use when I go somewhere. Did you change your britches? Now they're the same britches. Britches are uh, unaltered. Here's some dollaries dues for the extra time nax. You're a treasure to us and give us so much joy besides the tyrannical streaks you like to go on. Do I go on tyrannical streaks? Is that something that I do? I don't I don't do that. What are you saying? I would never. I would never. Just one more tape to go. And we can wrap this up. I had a second uh, series lined up. Pontiac Robotics Archive. But we definitely didn't have time to get to it, so I guess we'll have to do this some other time. These videos seem a lot shorter. But there's 20 of them. But you know what? We'll, just, we'll, we'll save this one for another day. Why not? All right, tape 12, let's do it. Uh, the last tape was truly nothing. Tape 11 was, was bubkiss. We got nothing from that. There we go. There we go. All right, tape 12. Oh, it's, it's not playing. There we go, there we go. It wasn't playing. Participation in this part of the TF system may result in the viewer achieving a heightened sensory state. Hell yeah. This can cause the viewer to experience unexpected visual and auditory occurrences which have no discernible source. Hell no. That sounds bad. These occurrences may include, but are not limited to, transient moving shapes, unsettling shadow formations, vocal phenomena such as whispering, ooh, unidentifiable music that sounds distant or muffled, a feeling of a separate presence even while alone. For a more comprehensive list and additional information, See the health and safety section of your handbook. Program equipment. You will need the following equipment for this tape. TF system neurovisor headset and workbook and writing utensil. Welcome to Waking Your Subconscious. Okay. We are met with an Inst instructional tape from Simeodyne about how to awake our subconscious. Greetings, and welcome to the second video program in the Preconditional Protocols and Orientation video system for Unit 13. Thank you. TF2, Waking Your Subconscious. This video cassette has been specially designed to utilize powerful psychological exercises, along with cutting edge technology, and your own brain's neuroplasticity, to allow Unit 13 to access the deepest energy potential of your incredible mind. This will be required to increase the likelihood of prime form cognogenesis. Before we begin, let's go over the required checklist to be sure you have everything in order, so that we won't end up with any negative or unexpected outcomes from this program. Okay. First on the checklist, ensure that you are alone, and will not be disturbed, for the entire duration of this I program. I am alone! It's critical that Wolfo. you do not become distracted, as working with the brain in such a way is a very delicate process. Second, turn off all light sources, except for your television or monitor that you are using for this program. This aids tremendously in your brain's ability to focus, but it also can make you feel vulnerable or frightened, which are beneficial to this program achieving the desired results. Okay, well unfortunately the sun Ideally, is still up. You would wait until nightfall to complete this part of the program. Nope. Third, that. ensure that your volume is turned up to a level where no outside or ambient noise is able to leak through your It's loud up. enough. It's this fine the way it is. helps with focus, but it also aids in those feelings of fear and vulnerability, which are where our deepest and most complex selves are rooted. Fourth, 
have your workbook open to the TF2 section and have your writing utensil nearby, as some exercises will require you to write. However, if for any reason you do not have your workbook, simply grab a regular notebook or some sheets of paper, and write your name in TF2 at the top of each sheet you use. You will need to hand those into your program liaison, and they will take care of transferring the data from there. Once all of these conditions have been met, you're ready to continue to the next part. Now is the time to make sure that your Neurovisor headset is correctly... Pause the... Please pause the tape and connect equip your electronic devices now. Hello, this is my first stream. Love your content. Well, thank you, Luke is foot. Love from Indiana. Max, have you watched Vita Carnice? Love to Wolfo. Vita Carnice, is that another analog horror series? I could look into it. I do love watching these. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I'm a big fan of this style of content, I have to confess. I like it. I'm a fan. Pause the tape and connect equip your electronic devices now. I don't have one. I didn't receive one of those, but you know what? Equipped and connected. Let's go anyway. If you need any assistance or are looking for more information regarding the Neurovisor, be sure to check the section titled Equipment and Connection in your Unit 13 Program Handbook. This will be your final opportunity to pause playback for the rest of this tape. Pausing after this point will cause a disruption, which could carve a fucking skull up What? Being collected by what did he say? Carbonite your fucking skull? Which could carve a knife your fucking skull? Carve a knife in your fucking skull? Guys, what did that sound like to you? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Carve the knife through your fucking skull. Carve the knife through your fucking skull. I guess. The data being collected by your headset. Your screen is about to gradually turn red. Once it is completely red, the program has officially begun, and the point of no return has been crossed. You have 10 seconds. It's 10 seconds to what? What's gonna happen? No! Don't! No! This is bad. This is gonna be bad. You are now prepared to see new shadows in your home. Program initiated. Section 1. Induction. Unlocking the gateway to the deeper corridors of your psyche. I see a weird shape there. For a sensitivity warning, our first section, Induction, contains bright flickering. If you have a photosensitivity disorder, it is best that you do not look at your screen. Close or shield your eyes, and just listen. Once the tone in your headset changes, it will be safe to look at your screen again. Induction will begin in five seconds. Alright, if any of you guys have epilepsy, you might want to look away for this next part. Just listen. Just e listen and use your imagination for this next part. But I don't, so I can see uh, strobe lights all I want. Beginning induction. Please stare at your screen for 30 seconds. I'm staring. <laughs> Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Ooh, that is freaky. I don't like that. Induction complete. Oh, you're just beaming information into my brain or something? Yeah, there's a shape of something there. I don't know what that is. Somebody's getting closer to me right there. I don't like it. Preparing your mind for enhanced neuroplastic realignment. This exercise will present you with five separate sets of words. Each set will contain six words. For each set, you will have also, ten seconds to- Also, it seems like this video has more comments than the other videos do. Hmm. Team Fortress 2 update- <laughs> Team Fortress 2 update is wild. Game's really spooky now. <laughs> 
Oh, you smart asses. To choose the one word out of the six that you feel doesn't fit with the others, and write it down in your workbook. Or on wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You are about to be shown five sets of words. Each set is made up of six words. For each set, you will have ten seconds to choose and write down the one word out of the six that you feel doesn't fit with the others. Um, okay. I can be a master of this. Of paper. If you do not have your workbook, simply write the numbers one through five vertically on your paper and place your answers beside each corresponding number. Now, I'm be let's so good begin. at this. Set one. Chair, table, couch, rope, bed, mirror. Uh, rope? I'm gonna say rope. What do you guys think? I'm gonna say rope. Set two. Brain, heart, blood, lung, liver, kidney. Blood? Could it be blood? Brain, heart, lung, liver. These are all organs. Blood is not an organ, though. Blood is not an organ. You can't fool me. I know blood's not an organ. That thing is getting closer, and it has eyes now. I don't feel comfortable around that thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. You see the eyes right there? Look. God, that's creepy. Is that a lane? All you cherish will be remade. Okay, well, that could be good. Hey, Elaine, what's up? Local Samaritan opens her heart and home to stray dogs. Terrified, screaming, running, followed, hiding, visible. Um, visible? That thing in the background is creeping me out. Get away! Back up! Oh boy. Love contorts her flesh and bone. Mangled, mutilated, disfigured, mangled. Or mutilated, disfigured, mangled, butchered, dismembered, improved. Yeesh, that thing, that thing. Get away. Get away. Oh, it's getting closer. <laughs> Morph, transform, mutate, turn. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Missing Charlotte Melgren. Okay. Where is your precious daughter, Jim? Okay, uh... An image of a woman named Margaret is seen she's apparently missing and also loves dogs having opened her home to them very nice of her Priming complete. Oh, good. I I won. Whoa, 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 whoa. I guess maybe the way that I'm supposed to be enjoying this is I just watch it all the way through without pausing. But every time I see something that flashes by quick, I want to pause and read it. Unauthorized alterations detected. This device has detected unauthorized alterations to the program content of this tape. Please stop playback immediately. No! And return this cassette to your program liaison. Failure to adhere to this warning may result in undesired consequences and could compromise your psychological well-being. Your compliance is mandatory. My dick is mandatory. I don't want to hear it. Section 3, Conditioning. Testing the way that you perceive and respond to certain stimuli. This next section is a specialized variation of the Stroop test, Classic. which will measure multiple facets of your reaction to congruent and incongruent stimuli, while also examining how you deal with high stress, high anxiety situations. You will be shown a series of faces with emotional expressions, and the word for each emotion written on each face. The word could match the expression, like the word happy on a smiling face, or they might not match, like the word angry appearing on a sad face. Okay. You are about to begin the first testing phase of this section. 
This will be the easiest phase, with each subsequent phase becoming more and more difficult. Look directly at your screen and state your responses out loud. Fa am I supposed to... S am I supposed to read what the word says, or am I supposed to describe the face? Hang on. Let's get the instructions again. Deal with high stress, high anxiety situations. You will be shown a series of faces with emotional I'm gonna try to do this for real. And the word for each emotion written <clears> on each <throat> face. The word could match the expression, like the word happy on Say a Say only the face, facial expression on each face match. from top to bottom. Like the word angry appearing on a sad face. I'm gonna master that. I'm gonna be so good at this. You are about to begin the first testing phase of this section. This will be the easiest phase, with each subsequent phase becoming more and more difficult. Look directly at your screen and state your responses out loud. Phase one testing start already. begins in five seconds. Shush, you shush. Shut up. Shush. You state the word written on each face and disregard the expression. Okay, state the word. Neutral. Happy. Sad. Angry. Stating the word. Scared. Neutral. You state the word written on each face and disregard the expression. It was telling me to do the opposite earlier, wasn't it? Sad. Happy. Neutral. Scared. Happy. Scared. Please state the expression shown on each face and disregard the word. Okay, now we're doing the, the inverse. Angry-ish? Happy? Neutral? Surprised? Dumb. Neutral again? State the expression shown on each face and disregard the word. Okay. Couldn't get that one in the middle there. Neutral-ish, happy, sad-ish, angry, happy, neutral, angry, neutral, sad, happy, surprised, um, ooh, uh, uh. That's a lot of faces. Changed. Okay, now I see a house. Oh boy, out of all the house, that is sure the most house. And the skeleton is walking through it. Okay, this is the dog kennel that that woman, Margaret, was running. Never visual security monitoring. T. Erickson. Password. Dot, 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 dot. Are you sure you want to call the property owner? Yes. Dialing owner, Melgren Charlotte. Thought her name was Margaret. Margaret Melgren. Hey, lady, you got a big skeleton walking around in your house. Do you know? Lady, do you know about your big skeleton walking around? Did you know? some unusual activity at Forever Friends Kennels. Our system alerted us that kennel door one was open and enclosed unexpectedly, followed by a power outage. Is it correct that your primary residence is the first unit at Forever Friends? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but... Okay, okay, so I'm not the one who got the security system. It was my dad. So I don't know if there's some way to fix this or whatever, but you guys have called me in the middle of the night like five times in the past couple of weeks, and it's all turned out to be false alarms. Every time. I, I'm so sorry about that, ma'am. I, I, I can take a look into why that might be happening if you like, uh, but first, I need to be sure that you're in a safe situation. Are you currently alone? Yeah, it's just me. But I, I'm looking out the window right now, and everything seems fine. I mean, the power's out, but it literally goes out all the time over there, so I'm just going to go flip the breaker. Uh, Ms. Morgan, we strongly advise against going outside or into the kennels, especially with the power outage. We can call out a police officer dispatched and they can make wait, sure it's wait, safe wait, wait, before you... Wait, hold on. Is, is there any 
way we don't have to do that. <laughs> Those dogs were happy because bones. Yeah, dogs love a skeleton. To get here. To chew on its arms and legs. Please. Ma'am, like it's just that simple. A ton of times, and plus, the dogs aren't even barking. If someone was in there, they'd be going crazy by now. Ma'am, uh, I'd get in a lot of trouble if anything happened, and I didn't call anyone. It's company policy. How about this? I'll keep you on the phone while I go, okay? I'll switch to my cordless and everything. If anything happens at all, you can call the police. Miss Milgren. I will even grab my flashlight. Please. I just, I, I have a lot going on tomorrow, and I really just want to get back to sleep. I, uh, well, uh, just uh, let me at least check tonight's footage to make sure everything looks okay mm. first, all right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Go for it. Okay. This lady sucks. Let me see here. Kind of. Playback error. The skeleton got to it. It's been sabotaged by the skeleton! Classic skeleton sabotage. Uh, um, okay, I'm getting an error. It's not letting me review it. Well, I I can just head over really quick, like real quick. Well, there's no motion alert in tonight's log, so okay, just please be quick and safe. Thank you. Seriously, I'm gonna go throw some clothes on and um, you're naked. You know, grab the cordless, okay? Yeah, all right. Lady, you're oh, naked? The false alarms you mentioned and see if I can figure out what's going on with God, that. she's naked. Okay. Be right back. She said she's naked. Is she gonna come out? Nope. Just a ghost. Just a spooky, scary ghost. File corrupted. On the cordless. Got my flashlight. Still there? Um, yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, heading outside now and then going right across to the kennel, so just hang on another sec. Okay. Oh, that is just a spooky, scary skeleton. Sends shivers up my spine. Spooky, scary skeleton and shivers up my spine. He likes to creep around and be a big fucking uh, pervert. Okay. Okay, I'm inside. And yep. Ma'am, are you aware about the spooky, scary skeleton? Uh, okay, I'm just gonna go check on the dogs real quick on my way to the basement. But this is it, she's gonna get spooked. Seems fine. I'm I'm really not sure this is a good idea, Miss Mogren. So, listen, something was wrong with the recording as I'm seeing of your home. What do you, What do you mean wrong? Ma'am, there's a I'm skeleton. I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking at here. It seems like the camera's glitched out or something. But the previous calls you've been getting, they they weren't false alarms. Yeah, again, I'm not sure what's going on here, but. Uh, Wait a minute. Been... If everything that we're seeing right here is taking from is taken from his perspective, then he saw the spooky, scary skeleton. So why didn't he say anything? He really should have said, "Lady, there's a damn skeleton." <laughs> Who else could possibly be seeing all this except for him? She's not looking at any of this. She's just talking to him on the phone. Now she's gonna get, she's gonna get murdered and raped by a skeleton. And it's going to be his fault for not warning her. Stalking around your property for a while now. I, I, I'm not sure how the previous people... Wait, did he say? Stalking around... Yeah, again, I'm not sure what's going on here, but... Uh, something's been stalking around Something. your property for a while now. I, I, I'm not sure how the previous people who called you didn't notice. Okay. Something like... What? An animal or... No, like a no, skeleton? Well, I, I don't know, actually. I just... Listen, I, I just think you should go back to your house. Bro should have led with that. Yeah, no kidding! Oh, okay, yeah, you, you win. Let me just make sure that the dogs are okay, and I'll head back over. They're just right here. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna try to look over tonight's footage again, just in case it's decided to work. Okay. What a dork. Hi, babies. Hi, Mama. It's... Um... 
What's wrong? Um, I don't know. You okay, you okay buddy? The dogs are spooked by the skeleton. Everyone knows a dog can the sense a skeleton. <laughs> They're all just standing here. Yeah, everyone well, knows a dog late, can smell so a skeleton a mile away. Tired or something. Uh, but let's just no, get you back. Not it. They're just standing here, not moving. Like, at all. Like, not even their eyes. It's, it's like... Oh my god. It's, it's like they're fucking dead, oh, but they're fuck. not. What the fuck? What? What? Miss Melgren, you need to get out of there and return to your house <laughs> immediately. I'm sending your information to the police. Miss right Melgren, now. there's a skeleton. <laughs> What's going on? Get the hell out of the house. Send all current okay, information, now. including oh, log data to reports. <laughs> what was that? Are you okay? <laughs> Charlotte. Charlotte, are you okay? You just you ripped my flashlight. Charlotte? You ripped my flashlight. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. This is good acting. Good <laughs> acting on her part. Oh, my hand. I it's the dude from Returning of the Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, it's the Tarman. She's about to get Tarmaned. Calm down. It's just a skeleton. Breathe in and breathe out. It's just the tar man. He's got a bone to pick with her. <laughs> shut up. You shut up. You shut your goddamn ass up. <laughs> he pops in. He says, Hello, I'm the Crypt Keeper. I've got a bone to pick with you. It's dark. I can't tell if it's really this dark or if, if I'm the Breathe, Charlotte. Breathe. You need to try to stay as calm as you possibly can. Yeah, you can say that again. That's what they always want. <laughs> My man burped so loudly. It did. I, you know what? I swear he he sounded like the guy, like the big fat zombie from uh, from Left for Dead, the one who goes. Bleh. 
That's what it sounded like to me. It sounded like a burping skeleton. Who <laughs> wants boneless wings? Oh, come on. The boomer, yeah. She needs some milk. She'll be fine. Walk it off. It's just a skeleton. She'll be fine. No, he needs milk. Because he's a skeleton, he needs the calcium. An important test. This test is made up of five statements. You will check true. Oh, wait, we're back to the tests now? After man said skeleton wants to bone, my phone rang and it was the Pokemon battle theme. <laughs> what? Skeleton wants to bone, my phone rang and it was the Pokemon battle theme? What's the connection? There's no connection there. You are about to be given an important test. This test is made up of five statements. You will check true or false besides the corresponding number for each statement in your workbook. If you do not have your workbook, simply write one to five vertically on a piece of paper and write T or F besides each number. You will have five seconds to respond to each True statement. Or false beside the corresponding number for each statement in your workbook. If you do not have your workbook, simply write one through five vertically on a piece of paper and write T or F beside. That woman just got number. killed by you a will skeleton. Have five seconds to respond to each Talk statement. about pathetic. You could you literally just push a skeleton now. over. Statement number one. This video system is physically changing your brain. True? That thing is getting closer a lot, <laughs> a lot quicker. Oh boy. That thing is getting real close. I can see it moving now. This can video you, system leverages Please the principles up. of neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections. Through these specific audiovisual stimuli and cognitive exercises, it's influencing specific neural pathways in your brain, thereby physically altering the structure and function of your brain in response to this experience. Coolsies. Statement number two. Only a it's very small me. percentage it's reach of out and people grab will me. never betray their moral values, no matter the situation. Uh, true. False. Only a very small percentage of people will never betray their moral values? I would suspect that's true. I think a lot of people would betray their moral values. Under the right circumstances, such as intense peer pressure, oh, survival anyone. situations, or psychological manipulation, it's proven that anyone can be made to betray even the strongest attachment. Really? To moral That's values. interesting if it's true. Statement number three Through your conscious mind, you make your own decisions. Uh, I'm gonna say false because I'm guessing the idea is that your unconscious mind has a lot to do with it as well. A large portion of human decision-making occurs at an unconscious level. The conscious mind rationalizes yep. these decisions yep, after yep, yep. the fact, making the person believe they made a deliberate choice. Mm -hmm. Choice is an illusion. It's Statement good illusion number anyway. four. We all have our moral thoughts and desires, but it's critical to focus our energy on the positive aspects of ourselves so that we can be better people. True? That sounds mostly true. False. The darkest aspects of your mind are part of a larger psychological entity that resides deep within your unconscious. Okay. This shadow entity cannot be reasoned with. It cannot be ignored. You cannot subdue it, lock it away, or eliminate it. Even attempting any such thing has the opposite effect, only making it stronger, darker, and more dangerous. Interesting. Statement number five. Opening the door Doesn't to your right. shadow psyche and embracing your darkest urges as a part of yourself is the only way to live a fulfilling life. I don't want to do it. I don't want to embrace my darkest urges. False. I won't do it. I won't be doing it. I won't be doing it. Not me. The devil ain't gonna get me. Open the black door. Ooh. Testing complete. That creepy figure in the background was real close. Oh, now it's gone. Activation. Establishing the subliminal bridge. 
what you are about to experience has been carefully constructed in combination with previous exercises to create a connection point. So I forgot to I forgot that I'm taking notes. Uh, basically, what what has happened? What have I missed out on since I stopped taking notes? Uh, <laughs> the woman, <laughs> the woman got grabbed by the ghoulies. <laughs> woman got grabbed by the ghoulies. Um. We return to unlocking our subconscious minds. In your conscious and unconscious mind, this is our final You don't want to get grabbed by the ghoulies. Please watch and listen very closely. Do not look away or shield your eyes for any reason. All right, gotta be a man and do it. Please remember, your fear and vulnerability are essential components to this process. Activation of the subliminal bridge will begin in five seconds. Nobody look away. None of you fuckers look away. You gotta be you gotta be a man. Oh wait, I looked away. What happened? Four. Three. Oh, we didn't even get to one. This is what I fear the most? Yeah, kinda. Clouds, very scary. That was a very scary. I am a very scared of the analog horror. Beautiful. Not the scariest thing I've ever seen, but beautiful, certainly. Ooh, I see some teeth. I see some creepy teeth. I see a creepy face. And this is unlocking my subconscious mind, huh? Fascinating. Oh, hello. <laughs> it looks like, uh, what's her face? What's the woman's name? Uh... That, who does this look like to me? Ugh. What's the name of the woman who's like who was like Jeffrey Epstein's partner in crime? <laughs> I know her last name is Maxwell. Her first name is uh, something like Jelaine or Gislaine or something like that. Some weird name that I don't know how to pronounce. That's who this looks like. Gislaine. That's who we're talking. This is the ultimate horror of all. Child sex trafficking. God, why did she have such a weird name? Gislaine? Gislaine? I have no idea how to say it. The deep dark woods, very scary. That was very scary. Rainy day. I would say a rainy day is more relaxing than scary. Or maybe that's somebody showering. Somebody peeking in while you're showering. That could be scary. That could be very scary. Max G is so skibbity coated. Do you want to explain what you mean by that? Just because I'm the Skibbity Rizzler, I am the original Skibbity Rizzler. That doesn't mean I'm Skibbity Coated. Ooh, that looks cool. Earth, space, flower, 
artifacting. Terribly compressed footage. Amoebas. High is usually more fun than this. It's more entertaining than this. Trust me. I'm back. What did I miss? Uh, we saw a woman get attacked by a skeleton, and now we're looking at some creepy eyes through a window. That one was pretty spooky. I like that. That wasn't bad. That gave me a spook, gave me a fright. Complete. Hell yeah, we did it. I'm activated. Spooky scary skeleton at the bottom of the stairs. Do not fall down the stairs or the skeleton will get you. Activation complete. North Adams Police. Anybody down here? Jesus, it's dark in here. Jesus, looks like a woman got murdered by a skeleton in here. The fuck was that? Some kind of a skeleton? Smells like bones. <laughs> oh God! Smells spooky and scary, like a skeleton. <laughs> uh. Smells like ribs. Yeah, exactly. Rattle 'em, boys. Just once, I want to be shot by a skeleton holding a Tommy gun and have him say, Rattle them, boys, and shoot me till I'm dead. Just once. Ideally, that is the way that I would love to die. Oh, ooh. Well, oh, that's fine. I'm sure that's fine. That's, whatever that was, I'm sure that was fine. It's probably fine. Probably fine. Complete. Next tape. Well TF3. Done completing the TF2. Waking your subconscious. Video cassette. Please allow your brain to rest for at least 12 hours before continuing this video system. Once you have rested and you are ready, enter the cassette labeled TF3. The Shadow. Everyone knows Valve is never going to make TF3. Why would they bother? Everybody is still playing TF2. I, I feel like once a week I go on Twitter and I see Team Fortress 2 trending. Why would they bother making a third one? Minion and Assimilation. This is the end of TF2 this is the game that will never die. Oh, that's it. That's it, you guys. We've been going for a little over four hours now. I think we can wrap this up. Well, that was Greylock, everybody. We watched it all. We watched the whole damn thing. I had fun. I had a lot of fun today. I had so much fun with so much of this. Um, whether because it was actually spooky or actually interesting, 
or it just gave us a lot of good stuff to riff off of and make jokes about spooky, scary skeletons. Um, that was a good stream. For, you know what? From where I was sitting, it was a good stream. I'm happy with how today's stream went. But... I also took a lot of notes. Look at look at everything we wrote today. That's a lot. I'm going to save this. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, because I don't really think I ever do anything with these notes. But still. Well, folks, you know what that means. That means it's time to wind things down. Had a few good laughs, my friends. Saw some spooky skeletons. And although now the fun must end, I hope you see that we had a ton of fun. You're all my neighbors and allies. And though it's time to part, as we traverse through lows and highs, I'll keep you all inside my heart. Sorry that it's time to go, but we can still share one more song. It's because I love you so that it hurts to say so long. Red and yellow, black and white, you're all precious in my sight. But it's time for us to say so long. My bones have been successfully rattled. Good stream. Well, you know, that's what I aim for. I aim to please. And I please by rattling them bones. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones, as they say. Well, I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. I would say I had fun today. But... All good things must come to an end, and so we wrap up another Wicked Wednesday here on Relax with Max. I'd like to take a moment to encourage you all to consider joining my Patreon, which now is over 10 years of updates. For just $5 a month, you can get access to useful resources for artists and animators such as source files, presets, and tutorials, and the link is in the description below. And if you're not interested in the art stuff, but you'd still like to support what I do, you can become a channel member right here on YouTube and get access to exclusive emotes in the chat. That's going to be it for me, folks. I'll see you on Friday. I think we're going to be playing the new game Henry Halibut, or Harry Halibut. Uh, you guys have probably seen it. You probably know about it. It's like a point-and-click adventure game, but with a uh, stop-motion animation art style. Looks really cool. And I've heard good things, so we're going to be checking that out. And thanks to everyone who joined us for this stream. Thank you so much for inviting me into your home and allowing me to spend the afternoon with you. It's been an honor and a privilege. And remember, I am close personal friends with each and every one of you. So long.